Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, welcome to our final match day of the WSF Men's World Team Junior Squash Championship 2022 here in Nancy, France. Bienvenue au championnat du monde junior par équipe masculine. Today, we will have uh, three matches. So the match order is player number one, player number three, player number two. Nous allons voir trois matchs avec l'ordre des joueurs. Joueur un, joueur trois, joueur deux. I will now welcome from England, all the players from uh, England, please come on court, 18 years old, Franklin Smith. Second player for England to receive on the court is 17 years old, Jonah Bryant. And the second player playing, second player playing the number two seat is the 18 years old. Sam Osborne Wild. And we are very happy to welcome on court the silver medalist of the individual World Junior Squash Championships 2022. Please give a warm welcome to Finlay Whiffington. The opponent is coming from the country of squash, which is Egypt. So please welcome on court, 17 years old, Salma Khalil. Next player is 14 years old. Please welcome the bronze medalist of the individual World Squash Junior Championship 2022, Mohamed Zakaria. And next player, please welcome the 18 years old, Mohamed Nasser. And player number one who will do the first game is the 17 years old, Karem El Torque. So, as the match order is 1 3 2, we will first see on court Karem El Torque and Finley Whiffington, followed by. Um, Salma Khalil and, and uh, Jonah Bryant and then we will see um, uh, Mohamed Zakaria against Jonah Bryant. Sam, sorry, Salma Span Wyatt. So we will have now a warm welcome to the team managers of both teams. They can come and join the players with the national flag. And it's now the time for the photos. 
In this time, I will welcome our referees, very important persons. Uh, refereeing for first match and second and third match is Thomas Wachter from Austria. And Tahir Khansada from Pakistan. Please welcome our markers too. We will have on marker position Simon Sanders, France. Christophe Jimenez from France. And Jana Kowalska from Ukraine. Enjoy. Enjoy the matches. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, Men's World Junior Championship Final for the team event. We have England matching up against Egypt. On the court, wearing the red of England, we have Finlay Wivington. And in the gold of Egypt, goldy yellow, uh, we have Kareem al -Tarki. My name is Luke Butterworth, coach for Team USA, and I'm followed. I'm joined in the commentary box by Mr. Andrew Cross. Welcome, Andrew. Good afternoon, Luke. How are you doing? Are you ready for an exciting matchup this afternoon? I am ready, to, ready and raring to go to watch this one. Um, it's going to be such an exciting start with these two great competitors on the court. Uh, Kareem El Torki has been through through the wars in this tournament. He's had a bit of a roller coaster. He's had some uh, obviously some you know tough matches going out in the round of 32 as a 3-4 seed, um, and he's had to uh, battle his way back through in this team event to earn the trust of his coaches. Um, and he's you know here he is in this first first string match. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he had a tough, tough match last week with the uh, he lost to Juan Torres in the last of 32. It was obviously a long, tight match. It went all the way down to the fifth. Uh, you know, obviously he's had a couple of days off since then to refresh himself, ready for the team event. Unlike Finn, who's uh, yeah, he went all the way to the individual final. He uh, probably had a bit of a roller coaster himself. You know, I've been beaten, Rowan. In the Europeans, and I'm sure you know, we'll look for it to uh, come away with a title today. I'm sure that's what he's looking for, Finn. Obviously, yeah. he's played a few more matches, uh, but I think England have rested him pretty well throughout the last couple of days to try and manage him to make sure he's fresh for today. Yeah, I don't know if he's played in every every tie of, that England have played in this team event. Uh, I think that's uh, wise from the coaching team after such a strong. Uh, individual event Half for time. Finlay. Uh, he struggled a little bit in the final with some shin splints and kind of just overuse and some tough matches to get to the final. And uh, here he is, he looks fresh. Um, top button is done. Always means business when you get your top button done. 
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this match today. Um, Egypt came through a battle yesterday against Pakistan. Uh, it was down to the deciding game and the young Zakaria brought, it, brought them through to the final with a 3-1 victory over his uh, Pakistan counterpart. England, you can talk more about that match, can't you, Andrew? Yeah, obviously England beat us last night 2-1. Uh, um, Finn obviously started it off by beating Jokim uh, in three games. Um, Amish and Raj then at number two beat, beat Sam Osborne Wild but uh, to be honest at number three Jonah was Jonah was really good last night and didn't really give uh, Harith Daniel any chance last night I thought I thought it was impressive from from start to finish you know so fair, fair play to them and I think this should be good and you know I think I mean let's Egypt have dropped dropped their number two here they've dropped NASA yeah, I think after his, his big battle with Nozaman yesterday, maybe got a few chunks taken out of him and uh, didn't quite come through that one. I think he lost in four games and uh, interesting to see him not in the lineup today. Uh, you've got Kareem El Torki at number one, Zakaria at number two and Salman Khalil at three. Um, and Mo Nasser, their original number two, is, is sat on the front row there to support his teammates. Yeah, it's obviously a call they've they've picked up and they've they've gone with. We're not sure if there's an injury or, you know, it's a, it's a tactical thing. Sometimes that happens, right? You pick a player you think might might do better against somebody. Time Doesn't always have to be the strongest player. It might be a style thing that you're looking at when you're picking the team. Yeah, I think uh, I'm sure both sets of coaching teams have been looking at the opponents today and. Going through, there's been lots of video available. I'm sure there's been some video analysis of each team, and and they'll be looking forward to you know how they can pull each other apart here. So let's go with the predictions then, Andrew. I'm a zero out of five in my predictions oh, for that. this tournament. So surely you have to go first. So are we doing just this match or over all three? Uh, we'll go just this match first, and then we'll go for the team. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, a Finn win here. A Finn win, is that because it rhymes? Yes. <laughs> Lovely. So I'm going with that. I think it's going to be in four, I think. Yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised if Kareem El Torki comes through this one, just just by watching him closely and seeing his form. However, I don't think you can write him off. You know, he's obviously got a lot of talent, and uh, he's, he'll have his, his, his uh, heart... He'll be wearing his heart on his sleeve, as he say, um, and getting stuck into this final. So it'll be interesting to see how he can settle down to uh, Finn's skill and creativity. So we'll see. But um, I think Finn, uh, Finn could get England off WSL, to a great start here. Um, World it's going to be a great match to watch. It's going to be very interesting to see how they both settle down in this first game. Final. Um, so first game we go. match. It's good Karim that there's a, quite a big crowd Turkey in here as well, and I think there'll be a few Egypt more. To serve. Coming in as, as we get Finlay off, there's a big noise there as uh, England to receive. Karim came on to court five on the games Egyptian side. Level. Yeah, there's an excitable front row, that's for sure. Oh, all the teams and coaches are perfectly poised on that front front bench. But not, up one not a bad start there. Pulled it out of the sky into the front right corner. I'm sure we've got a lot of viewers from around the world for this one, especially in... Uh, in the UK and Egypt, so I hope you're all enjoying uh, your, your Sunday afternoon. I know there's been a lot of talk on some of the uh, social forums like uh, squash stories and all the rest of it, so hello to all you guys who are watching. start from Karim, he's the one who kind of uh, found a bit of length here first. Looks very calm out there. Down. And out. One all. Nice opening exchanges here. 
Just trying to feel each other out into the front of the court as well, and not just kind of finding the length initially. There's no no rest for the wicked, it looks like. Yeah, there's quite a lot of trickle bust being thrown in and trying to assess each other's little movements at the front. Yeah, after all, it has been, this is the uh, 12th day of the event, so, you know, the bodies will be tested. And it is, you know, we spoke about this a little bit last week, it is quite warm in here again, you know, the temperature's picked up after a couple of cool days and the individual finals and semis. Um, it's pretty hot outside again in, in Nancy and... You know, that makes that court extra hot. There's quite a lot of people in this room, so temperature's definitely warmer than it was a couple of days ago. Some good gets there Down. to keep the ball alive. That was a good rally for El Torque, that. I think he uh, Hand out. heard a few heavy Two movements one. early on. So let's see if uh, see how the next few rallies pan out. It was a good good opening there from uh, El Torque. He was taking that ball into that front left corner. Finn just didn't quite get his defensive opportunities uh, executed well enough to get himself back into the rally. Down. 3-1. You can't say he's not up for it. No, he's definitely up for it. He's uh, looking at the bench almost after every rally. Just trying to feed off the energy off that front row. He looks quick into the front corners at the moment. He's definitely moving better than Finn at the moment, it looks like, into the front. I mean, despite going out in early in the individual event, you know, I think he's obviously got some Down. some really strong talents in there. So I think he's got Finn's just got Four to neutralise him a little bit at the start here. Yeah, I think Finn's not he hasn't quite settled yet so far. He's uh you know, it's, it's Torquay that's dictating all the play at the moment. He's deciding when it goes in and the pace in which this game's been played at, at the moment. Finn's kind of on the bottom of the bounce of things a little bit, and especially in the front left. That's a better opportunity from Finn. And again. No let. No, no let. Uh, he's, and he's in a better position to take in that backhand drop there and he was above the ball and hitting down on it into the front corner which then created the opportunity in the front right. And it's always good for your confidence when you can feather in that winning drop nice and tight. Especially for someone like Finn who's got very, lots of skills, you need to have confidence in that you can take it in short. It's an early ask and an early nil let from the referee. Just let him know, go get that ball. Not quite the right shot and there from Finn, I don't think. Five, I two. I think he's seen me practicing my cross got <laughs> nicks, I think, there, Andrew. Just came out towards the tee area and put away nicely by El Torquay. Yeah, I think he just needs to build a little bit here. Uh, you know, 4 2 there, try and get back to 3 4, not give, give El Torquay another three point lead. Yeah, I think El Torquay is very animated between rallies that he's winning. He's. Uh, Feeding off the energy from his teammates and his coaches, that pound in his chest. Like in this situation, you don't want the game to run away from you, so Finn's doing very well here just to slow the pace down a touch. Find the back of the service box of his length. See that one down Six the middle. Two. I'm not entirely sure he was aiming for the door, but um, paid off. Yeah, he got away with it. What I liked about that rally, though, was that when he used that two wall burst from the backhand side, he just got a good amount of weight of shot. And he got a good margin for error on the front wall. He wasn't looking for it to be a winner, he was just utilising the space in the front of the court. Yeah, and then he got Finn on the bottom of the bounce there, lifting it. There's another one down the middle. He, he definitely two meant that one. Shots. Seven oh, he's two. Definitely pumped up for this, isn't he? He's uh, fist pumping on the right. You know the English crowd have got to, you know, the England supporters there on the front row. I've got to try and get Finn into this a little bit. You know he's got to try and silence this this momentum and that Karim's got at the moment. 
I think he's just got to be tough and stick stick to his uh, his guns here and just try and uh, try and slow the slow the game down, not like run away from him, get onto the tee and be balanced. Right now, El Talk is dictating everything that's going on. That's a good shot. And out. Three seven. Yeah, it, it, it kind of pointed to his head there straight away. Uh, El Talk after that shot. Good width. Four seven. Two good rallies. Doesn't really show much outward emotion, Finn, does he? He's, uh, he looks quite composed in himself. Four yeah, seven. He's, it's obviously under the cosh here, but you you wouldn't you wouldn't think that he looks flustered or anything like that. No, you can, he's definitely keeping himself calm, and he's obviously he's been in this situation before, so he, he's going to believe in himself. If he wins this rally, it'd be good to get for him to get back to 5-7, and he won't want to give El Torque another four-point lead. He's just starting to cut off a few balls here. Finn around the middle. Go on. Ball still alive, very bouncy ball. Get it. Oh. Oh, that's yes, let. Oh. Yes, let. From the left. I mean, that, that, that for me was... Four seven. No let there. Yeah, I, I would have probably given a no let there. He kind of asked early, thinking Finn was in his way. And he, if he'd have just punched that down that forehand wall away from his body, he would have won the rally, I think. Yep. No, no. Yeah, good shot. Already on the feet. And out. Eight four. I think that shows you just that little clip of the crowd there, just how uh, important this first game is to the Egyptians for that confidence. Set the tone nice and early in this match. I think for, so, for someone like Kareem as well, who went out early in the individuals, I think Nine confidence four. is key here. Yeah, and, and just as we were just talking about, Finn really didn't want to give these points away. He's, he's kind of gifted a and few out. away there. Five, now, nine. He's now down four points in the first game. He's got to try and pull this back somehow, but El Toki's been playing well. Mm. Definitely wouldn't have thought that he'd gone out in the round of 32. He looks very calm when he hits, does El Toki. He's always got a slight delay, down. natural slight delay in his swing, and that can make you stop and start and stand still when you, before you hit Six, the ball nine. and have to move, and it's quite taxing. Um, but I think what we've seen from him is that if he if he gets rushed a little bit, he's not as t you know he's not as tight with his uh, with his building game, and if he can kind of get him into them back two corners and he can open you up, it's going to give Finn opportunities. But right now he just looks very calm. He's striking the ball clean and just hitting his targets in general. Yeah, and he's obviously extremely pumped up for this match. Out. I mean, seven nine. Ball is out. All right. I mean, I'll... it's close. Yeah, no one really, no one really said anything. None of the Egyptian bench got up to uh, to say it was in. No. But remember, as a referee, you have to have twenty twenty vision. So we won't be arguing with the referee. That's a great shot. Could hear the strings from here on that one. Came underneath that ball the right Eight, last second. Nine. Softly feathered it in. It's back in it now. For oh, oh, what a winner. And out. And what a reaction from the front row. 10-8, game ball. Most of them got up there, yeah, there was with a, fist pumping it. There was a little spring in the step of Zachariah there. I think he almost hit the, hit the back wall. Poor serve though, he just left it loose. He left it loose at a crucial time as well, back in at 8 9. A bit high. Just looking at Finn's racket um, in between shots here, it's quite low. So when he's having to react, he's kind of flicking at the ball and he's not quite getting that ball through into the space when he's having to think fast. 
Yes, let. Yes, let. Ten eight. From the right. Front, Game ball. Front row. I thought they had it then. And yeah. At first, from our angle here in the front corner, it looked like there was a lot of distance between that ball. Cross got Nick attempt. There's that delay. Nice and tight. A sense of doubt. Oh. 11 8, game to Egypt. Okay, first Egypt game to Kareem El Torki. A little error there just crept in from Finn. Uh, takes the game 11 8. Uh, but I think he deserved that first game uh, for his overall performance. I think he dictated the play. He was very consistent. He was forward thinking. I think Finn was kind of trying to get himself into it, but wasn't quite finding his targets. But fair play to Kareem Al Talk. He uses energy there pretty well. Yeah, I thought he was good there first game. He was definitely more, a little bit more pumped up for it. He was, uh, you know, finding his lines, attacking a little bit more. He was. Uh, yeah, I thought a little bit better than, than Finn there, but we'll see what are the response is here. You know, obviously we can see here there's a couple of Egyptian coaches over there giving out instructions to, to What Karim. would you be saying to Finn here in between games? You know, he's down one love, you know, he's got a lot of tools. How, how would you unlock his tools? Yeah, I would think yeah, if I was coaching Finn, I would probably be thinking Play about we'll him. him in 60 seconds. You know, just trying to find his length a little bit more and just trying to work his way in. But I think when that ball gets lifted high up onto his forehand and he keeps going for that cross-court nick, he's finding himself in a little bit of trouble. So yeah, I think need he's to got, stay he's, away from that. Yeah, I think he's got to come out and match his aggression as well, right? He's just like that, that energy. You can't just kind of go through the motions and hope that you know, over time it's going to unlock it. In this, in this match, I think he's just got to step up a little bit and just be a little bit more aggressive. Um, with his build-up play, even if he's you know, trying to in play seconds. a bit more defensively and target, I think his, his energy's got to be a bit more aggressive, just to let, let his opponent know that he's there too. Yep. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Maybe, you know, try and push himself up a little bit more. When he's, when he's been on top of the ball, he's been quite good, but at the moment, it's uh, I think Karim's been the one that's been dictating things. He's been the one that's been aggressive, taking it in and backing up on the next shot, a few combinations. Um, Finn looks a few Egypt bottom of the bounce. Lead one game to love. And lifting some of these drop shots in this front back Level. Out. I think the, uh, the young Egyptian will just be business as usual again. I think he's going to come out firing. I, I, don't, I think if the ball's there to be taken in and he's built that opportunity, he's going to go for it. He's got a one love lead, so he can kind of think about not you know, taking his opportunities but not giving anything cheap away. You don't want to give away any lifelines to allow Finn back in too early. Seen a little pace change. There you go. No leg. Yeah, it was a long way from that ball. One leg. Oh, it was a little bit too good there, so we will see. Stroke to Egypt. Yeah. Stroke to Egypt. Again, it's just that movement for me and out of that front corner all. for Finn. It just looks a little bit heavy and a little bit. Yeah, I think also there, though, that ball got pushed down the line. He kind of flicked at it to try and get it past it versus hitting a solid, more balanced shot. And it just kind of came back to him. That's why it was a stroke. But I don't know if that's to do with like that, you know, yeah, see that laboured movement out the front left. However, his racket's just a little bit low and he's flicking at the ball. Whereas Karim, he's really on top of it, isn't he, as he goes into the front. There's a big aggressive movement in there and... Not aggressive in a bad way, but aggressive in as if it's positive towards the ball, and then he's able to generate the pace into yeah, the it shot. Look, it looks very balanced when he's hitting. He's going Some really nice little delicate shots around the front there. 2 1. Down. Oof. Got nice away with the there. Yeah, I mean, oh. he wasn't getting that one back. <laughs> I think Finn he gave a little reaction then off the serve as the serve just hit the nick, and then a little sigh of relief as that burst hit the tin.
He's gone with one down the middle again. That's a great shot. That's a great Down. shot. Used his space really well there. Held, oh, held no. the ball. That good Three, delay two. and then that snap of the racket through to the back of the court. It was a really well weighted shot. Yeah, didn't rush, didn't rush at all. That's good because the, there's a backhand drive down there from Finn which looked like it had changed the rally but Karim got himself back in front which was, which was good. Oh, that's a great shot. He's got it up. Not tight enough there. That's better. Getting it through. Down. Uh, again, though, I think it's not the quality at the front of the court from Finn at the moment. It's just not quite quite good enough. Four, two. He's trying to just rely on his racket, isn't he? Whereas he needs his body to get up there and be a bit more balanced. Like there, it would just, it just looked like he had no strength for the racket, right? It's a weak, uh, a, a poor error to give away early in this game. Down. Yeah, there's another one. He's banging his legs. He's Five, two. Something not quite right at the moment. You were saying how calm he was. There's definitely know, some now expressions now, there. Now he's giving us some signs. I thought he'd be a decent poker player, but now we're unlocking his uh, his bluffs. <laughs> the thing I like from El Torque here is his attacks are... You know, he's mixing up with a trickle burst at the front and he's playing something straight. So Finn's always got to keep keep moving. He's hit quite a lot down the middle, actually, to throw it off, throw him off a bit. Yeah, he's, he's utilising, like, all areas of the court. Even there, just hitting that, you know, that fifth, sixth corner. Just not not quite going for the nick, but just trying to get that ball running just short of the service box. Down. Keeps you, it just changes your rhythm all the time. I think he's, he's doing pretty well at I'm that. Out. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he'll be disappointed at losing that rally. You know, he got a lot of work Three, into five. finning that rally there. So, obviously, he would have preferred to have won it. But even though he lost it, he's definitely getting the work into the legs. Just sensing how this game's going, I would say that it's really, really important for Finn to get to the second game. I think... I think the third game, if, if he's down to love and, and talk is and out. on the train that he's at, Six, it's not going to stop, I'm afraid. He's definitely looking confident. That was a fantastic shot in the front right. No let. Yeah, that no was let. too good for me. I think the line was around the side there. And again, that's a little bit of a laboured movement there into, into that corner. I think going back to the whole social media before the event and squash stories and all the other uh, forums out there, the, no, there was a lot of talk about no, Karim Al Talk. Yeah, I think there was uh, a few people, seven. you know, hunting him out for the winning the whole event, the individual. And you know, when he went out early, it was a bit of a shock, but. I think you're seeing here his, his qualities, right? I think he, you're seeing that he's got the skills, but he's also got that, that tactical now about using the court well. And, um, you know, fair play to uh, Juan Jose Torres from Colombia for unlocking that and, and taking him out because that must have been a, a fantastic match. But here we're really seeing how dangerous he actually is. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely been positive, that's for sure. He's lifting when he's under pressure, but he's... He's the guy dictating all of this so far. He definitely looks like he's enjoying himself out there as well. He's putting some great combinations there. He's, he looks like he's oh. relaxed when he's swinging. Okay. He's using his passion as well between points, as you've just seen there. Again, that, that triple out. burst. He's, he's, Eight, you four. might have missed that on the screen there, but he's pumping his chest away. He's, he's banging away on the chest. Very animated front row. I think they know how important this first matchup is. And then obviously, 
You know, it's the number threes on next. Down. I think the, the thing is, is that for Finn, it's just Nine not going four. away, is it? You know. Yeah, that relentless pressure, and he's like forcing it a little bit there, and he's trying to, you know, make his drop shot perfect because he knows it's going to be tough. Oh, great so dive! Up. He's going to get that. Oh, he slipped oh. on his own sweat. Cloud <laughs> service, please. Thought he was going to get that then, but yeah, slipped on his own sweat as he was going back. Fantastic first dive though into the front corner. We have a great view of it from here. We need to get Simba Mawati from Team USA on here for the uh, court wiping. He's is he good it is. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, he goes against the grain, with the grain, and efficiency, actually. Very oh. efficient. I bet I, I bet he's good at that. He's good at cleaning up. Right. And out, 5-9. Stop, 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 stop. The door is not closed. Five nine. Quick from the Egyptian front row to notice that the uh, door wasn't quite closed properly. And out. All right, we go. Five game ball. Ten, Ten five, five game, game ball, ball to, for a two love lead. English bench looking for answers. Eleven five. Uh, Finn's just. You know, throwing the racket out of his hand Egypt. there a little bit, not, not anything Egypt. malicious. Two he's games just, to one, two games to love. You know, he's obviously feeling something, but Al Talk is all over him at the moment. He doesn't quite seem to have a response for it. It's going to be a big, big talk here from uh, Adam Fuller and Josh Taylor. Yeah, I'm just sat here looking at him to the to the right of us. He's He's got his head down, he's, he's taking on the information, taking on some fluids. He's going to have to find a way here to really push through what, any kind of discomfort that he's got or whatever it may be, he's got to find a way to get that accuracy. I think we saw a few uh, easy errors of trying to trust his racket skills versus actually getting his body up there. Um, so I think he's got to push through and get more balance on the court uh, to get back into this one because right now El Talk, is, he looks very comfortable, very confident uh, hitting the ball into all areas of the court. Yeah, I think El Toki looks he looks good, and I can you can just see through the Egyptian bench and I'm looking at the front row. And whilst most of them have been very animated, Matami's there, and he's he's obviously seen a lot over the years. Play he's been around for a long in time. In 60 and he's, seconds, he's cool as a cucumber sat on that front row, and he's just kept his arms folded. He hasn't said much. He's you know he's been around for many years. And I can see him now in between games, just giving out the instructions and. You know, he's yeah, I think he's got a you know, wealth of experience, hasn't he? And uh, all the players show that respect towards him as well. I think he, he can uh, fire them up, but he can also cool them down, I think. I think he's got that great balance. He, doesn't, he, he, he personally doesn't really seconds. get that emotional, does he? He's, he's very, compared to the rest of the bench there, they're very you know, up and down in fist bumps and you know, getting Kareem El Taki fired up, whereas he seems cool as a cucumber. Yeah, he's been great. 15 over seconds. The years. You know, I think he's, he's obviously delivered a lot of success over the years and he'll be looking for one more today. And you can see him there just on the front row with his arms folded. Yeah, Egypt are the reigning champions of the team event and Egypt won last, lead. last in uh, 2018 when they beat England 2-0. Uh, yeah, that was in India, in, in Chennai. Yeah, obviously, so they're, they're, they're vying for their seventh team title and England are looking for their... Fifth. Could be an early no let. No let. There we go. No let. Hand out. One look. Yeah, I don't, wasn't really much of an attempt to ask there, was there? I mean, the referee didn't quite seem to know what was if that was an ask or something had happened he'd missed. So this first rally, the second rally, sorry, there seems to be a definitely a bit of a reaction here from Finn. You see it from our angle here, you can see the body language has definitely picked up a little bit. England. Yeah, he's also to looking England. to take that ball a little, a little earlier, England. isn't he there? Yeah, he's definitely picked up a lot here. Down. You can see in between rallies as well, you know, how the pace is picked up, how he's moving to take the serve and 
the, the body positiveness in the shoulders has all, all of a sudden come back. There's yeah, definitely a better energy about Finn in this, the start of this third game. And, you know, if we didn't see a, a change in energy or a change in uh, rhythm, it was only going to be one-way traffic, wasn't it? So out. let's see if we can keep on it. 1-3 here. And out, 1-3. It's good that, uh, you know, he called that. You know, it's, it's always good to see the players, you know, calling their balls out. There was a few yesterday which I think made the match a little bit more tense than it needed to be. Um, so, you know, I think so far the match has been very clean and it's been it's been great so far. Yeah, it has been a great match so far. Not Down. many decisions uh, for the referee one. to kind of ponder over. Kind of got away here, Finn, at the start of this. Down. Mm. Karim's uh, just lost. The, you know, the ball might have gone cold in between there and he's not really quite adjusted to that. Yeah, I think he's also, you know, getting a little, little impatient. You know, I think he's, uh, what we saw was quite well calculated attacks in the first two, albeit, you know, quick and fiery, whereas here he's trying to get them quite too early in the rally and not quite balanced as Finn stepped up his game and his energy. Two, six. Uh, it's, it's almost like he's firing at the moment without that, without that base and... You know, that length's just dropped off a little bit. Oh, that's a great shot. There's that balance in his swing. Before he hits that ball, he looks very balanced. If you balance, you've got a good chance of being more accurate. Not having to improvise as much. Oh. That was an excellent shot. It's a nice little hold at the front, wasn't it? Just seeing that from our angle as well. We're sat at the side wall in line with the... Looking along that front 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 uh, court line, and that ball stays so short. Yes, let. Yes, let. Three six. It's nice to hear from uh, England squash legend Daryl Selby, who's watching no. at home, hoping for Four, a Finley six. fight back. Yeah, I'm sure he is. He's a little bit disappointed he didn't see Simba sweeping the court, but that's okay, we can request that. He's back in here, here though, El Torquay. Down. And Finn, Finn's body language has just dropped again, hasn't five, it? This is a pivotal moment here, isn't it? 6-2 to 5-6. Problem is, it's gone away pretty quick, and that, that bounce Down. in energy, it's just Oh, it's you just don't need to do that. That was the bottom of the tip. Six all. Starting to look a little bit animated as well. He's not quite getting in front of him. If you see him there just trading the, the, the up and down that back and wall, he's not quite getting his body in front of him, Finn. He's gone for the winner there. Stroke to England. Yeah, it looks like a stroke from my Stroke angle. to England. And out. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite interesting from this angle, you know, because we can see the movement out piece. of the back corner and there's a little bit of contact just on the way in, which I think Finn's just not quite getting off that ball. Yeah, and it is, you know, just that, that split second of movement off the ball, if you can get, get a little bit lower out the back and, and use your legs as a fire forward, I think you can, you know, I think uh, Torquay, forcing him to win from behind you, um, could and be a solid seven, tactic here, six. just especially, you know, at the start of this game, he was hitting those errors from the mid-court and, you know, around that service box region. I think he's got to get himself in front and physically just be in front of him, so... Talk, he's not got all the front wall to look at. Well, that's a good lucky width. one. Yeah, good width, good line. Eight, six. Lucky bounce, though. They say lucky, I've had a perfect width for Scott Crosser. Uh, yeah. Perfect when you hit it, it's not when it goes against you. <laughs> no lead. No lead. Seven eight, good drop shot. Just yeah, looking in down. front of us here, we've got Jonah Bryant Seven, warming eight. up. He's next on court. What would he be thinking right now? Is he in the zone of his own game or is he thinking too much about the score that we've seen in front of him? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because, you know, 6-2 five minutes ago, he's probably, and you know, I think I've got another game seven. here and all of a sudden 
Karim comes back, he's going to get back on with his warm-up. He's just shouting, come on, Finn, as, as loud as he can from the side here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good shot. And out. Uh, more animation on the Egyptian front rows. They, yeah, they, they want this in free, don't they? They want this over. And out. They want the point in the nine. bag. I think he got that. I think he just cut the racket underneath that ball, yeah. That oh, that's a bad error. That's, again, as you said earlier, that's bottom of the tin, actually. It's not... 9-0. It's, it's not close. He likes to be creative, but there's a time and a place, I think. You know, you're up 9-8. You've got to just put the, put him in the back two corners and allow him to go for a risky one and give you that cheap error to get game ball. I know he wants to get a winner and, you know, go take the initiative, but... You can't be putting the ball on the bottom of the tin. And there's another tin to get a match ball. Yeah. One more, they say. Ten, there's a lot of one, ball. little fingers up there saying one more from the front row. Big rally here in this match. In this contest between these two great nations of squash. Yeah, not not really the, the shot you want in it. 10-9 match fall down. Giving him an angle, great hold, and oh, almost died. They're off the feet at the front row. Yeah, they're up this What one. a rally. Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh, he almost went through the back wall. Well, that's quite a heavy Quarter fall. Service, please. That's a heavy fall in the back corner there. So hopefully he's all right. He's back on his feet and walking around, but... I think in that rally as well, though, El Torque started to open it up a little bit towards the end and gave him the angle to that straight drive. I think Finn's got to just really knuckle down here, not give him too many angles to play off and definitely don't give him anything cheap. Hand out. El Torque has just got the wind blown out of him. Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't got up well there, has he? He's holding his elbow here at the moment. Hand out. He's definitely breathing a bit Ten heavier. All. But he Play had a few chances in that rally to finish it. Mm hmm Sometimes simple is uh, the way to go. And he just tried overthinking it with the trickle burst and gave him that angle. His drops have been going in all day, haven't they? Yeah. Out. Oh, that's out. Yeah, just click the line. 11-10, game ball. All right, here we go. Rolls reversed. Game ball to Finn to get one back here. Great drop shot. Almost. Down. Again, he's gone for that all day. He's been, he's been teased into that all day so far, and he's not, he's not been anywhere ball. near it. Yeah, has I, hate, I hate to be critical, but he just need that. He just needed this game to get over the line, right? And then he can settle back in. Down. And there we go again. Another error. Yeah. The cross court, Nick, and now he's within a blink of an eye. He's match ball down again. He's obviously having to Roll take. He's, he's obviously telling himself there must be something physical Match if he's ball. taking these kinds of risks. Maybe he's meant to be a bit tired as well. Yeah, been a long w couple of weeks, but hopefully he can stick tough here. Talk is get good length here. He's definitely pumped up here, Talk. You can see it in his movement. Tight oh, drop. Good get. Oh, he's got. Oh, it's beautiful. Hand out. The well, skills on display, Will Strop-esque there, you know. Service, please. Didn't go around the balls, give it a little fan underneath and a little touch in. Impressive dive, actually. Risky to do at 12-11, match ball down in the uh, I think that just shows his character, tight. though, doesn't it? He's, he's that kind of guy, it seems. Going for cross-court nicks and that from you not know, being balanced and stuff like that. It's either going to pay off, if one of them's going to roll and he'll be telling us then, you know, I meant it. It's fine. We will see in a minute. All. Back at 12 all, we'll see if he can keep it out of the tin in this rally. Down. 13-12. Game all right, ball. Big point. Game ball. Good retrieval. Great Ooh, drop that shot. Was, that's beautiful. That was close. Oh, there we go. 14, Game back. 12. 
going to England. Egypt leads. It's going to be an interesting one psychologically for both players now. Talking had a couple of match balls there. You know, and there was one, there was one in particular there where he thought it was a winner, and the Egyptian bench thought it was a winner. And they were all on their feet, and then quickly have to sit back down when they were realised that Finn was getting it back. Yeah, he just sat up that little bit, and he's got his racket under in that back right corner. But great game from Finn, especially at the start of the game. You know, he he, uh, he stepped up the court, took the initiative a bit. I think physically he was in front of him, looking better around that mid court region and front court. Um, made some interesting choices towards the end of the game. Maybe a little fatigue in his in his mind um, creeping in. But now, you know, two one, one two down. <laughs> There's that fan shot and the dive. That was a dive, wasn't it? A great view of the you dive. You weren't getting wasn't up it? from that crossing. No, I wonder if he even got out the back corner. Yeah, I think it's interesting now. I think, I mean, if we just take body language, we can see El Torque over there just looks a little bit slumped in that chair over there. Looks Play will resume in 60 seconds. Maybe just a little bit flat. He's going to try and keep that energy because he's had really good energy today and he's been really positive in his movement and shots going to the front. I think he's been more more the initiator in this match. I agree, yeah. I think, you know, what he's, 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 he was using the energy of his teammates and, and the crowd. It'd be interesting now if that adrenaline wears off a little bit and now he kind of, you know, if, if, if Finn can put that element of doubt into his mind, it'll be some of these attacking shots might not be going in, but I fully expect Kareem to come out firing here and trying to get back back on the tee and, and you know taking up the pace on Finn and not giving him too much time on the ball. Well, I mean, that's, Egypt what, that, that's what won him the games first two one. games. He was... Uh, England to serve. He was very good in the first two games. He came back into it there. He's, he's had Level. match balls. So. Against Torres, was he two love up as well? He was two love up. I think it was 11-9, 11-9, 9-11, 9-11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 9. Yeah, he was, I think he was two up against Very Torres, so match. hopefully that's not going to be playing on his mind. Down. And that, the towel bin. You don't want that in the first rally. One love. Yeah, he's looking at the bench and he's just trying to he's put his arm, arm out a little bit. As if to say, try and calm himself down. Interesting match for those, um, those body language... Uh, critiques, right? Out. You know, you got El Torque who's, you know, pounding his chest and, and all the rest of it, and you got Finn who's looking, you know, calm and composed, and he was getting a little flustered in that second game. It seems to be back to business now. That's a good shot. Yeah, he's, he's back pumped up Court here, service, El please. I think it's also good for Finn to have that um, support system in his corner as well. Josh Taylor's been with him, the England coach, for a long time in Manchester. I think he'll just, you know, he obviously has that trust in his coach and he'll believe in everything he's saying and, and getting back on track. 2 1. Interesting to notice his, uh, his clean-cut T-shirt, top button is undone. It's down to the nitty-gritty now. Yeah, OK. He's rough and ready to get stuck in. And on this comeback. Down. Lent over the ball there, talking for the first time. Yeah, not Two quite in the all. right position for that. Probably the right shot, but the execution of it just not quite there. Good lift, fantastic weight of shot. Oh, he look, he's looking good here. Great combination of different paces left there, side. using the height of the front wall Three to lob it in the back from corner. The left. From the left. Soft hands and then a quick little Three stun two. across the court. Yeah, it was definitely that lob that set up that rally. It's a wonderful weight of lob into that back corner. I've seen a lot of really nice lobs this week. A lot of players using the height of the front wall. It's been some hot conditions, there's been a lot of resetting. Stroke to Egypt. Yeah, the, I think this week, especially we've and seen a lot of matches go all. to five. 
I think I've seen more matches this week, especially two love down comebacks. I think we've seen a lot of those over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, don't remind me of those from last Wednesday. <laughs> um, but you know, we've also seen a lot of patches of patches in matches where players have won five rallies in a row and then lost five rallies in a row. Probably to do with the conditions in here as well. You know, we spoke about how hot it is. You know, that levels of concentration needed. A fist pump there from Finn. And out. Like that counter three. drop. We wanted that one. But yeah, the conditions have been really tough for the players. You have to take your hat off to them, don't you? They've, they've not, uh, they've not complained and just got on with it and tried to deal with it the best they can. Yeah, they, they've definitely done well over the last couple of weeks. It's, it's a heavy schedule. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of two matches a day. Down. I know there's, there's not much time of rest between the matches. 5-3. And they keep going consistently for 12 days, so it's, you know, there's a lot, a lot going on, and with that heat especially, especially... Just in being in the club as well, right? Yeah. Not, not so much just playing, like you were sat here uh, refereeing, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's pretty hot and humid in here, so that takes it out of you, even as a spectator. So when you're in and out of the club all day, um, it's so important for these players to look after themselves with hydrating. No lead. Yeah, it's six good. three. Again, though, it's, it's got off to a good start here, Finn. He's back in front, and he's starting to dictate a few of these rallies. Well, that's the first time we've seen El Torque not really, not really run after a ball so far. Oh, I th what I'm finding quite interesting is. Finn's kind of found his weight of shot to the back of the court at the moment. It's, it's just starting to get El Torque just lifting out the back corners. And, you know, again, that's another Great good lob. lob. And there's an, he's lifting and then he's in the front being able to do what he wants. He's so balanced now, right? Yeah, he's the really last few shots he was up, up right. against that front Go ball, right. taking up that ball, put a bit of hold Eight, into his three. movement, and then that volley drop, perfectly balanced. Down. I think we're going to see El Nine, Torque just give this up, I think. What a comeback. Yeah, I think we're going to have a regroup here ball. for the fifth from El Torque. Great to see this match going to a fifth game. We want to watch some more great squash. Just looking there at the um, the schedule that like we just talked about, it's been so intense. 11, this is Finley's 11th match England. in the 12 days. Two That's, games all. Uh, yeah, it's pretty heavy, yeah. Right, it's a heavy schedule. And they've managed that too. They've rested him from a few of the matches and to give him some time to rest, but... Still, that's a lot of squash, and to come back from 2-0 down and match yeah. ball down here to take it to a fifth shows that he's got the guts. Has he got the glory? Yeah, uh, to be honest, when that drive went down that forearm wall, I thought it was all over, but he did well to pick it up, and he's, he's definitely back here. Now we're going to need to see a response from uh, Karim El Torki. Yeah, we've got a subdued Egypt bench. Now Physio's going over now. Yeah, we've got, got a little bit of a problem here. So I can see the physios headed over into the corner. They're looking at something on his on his. We're uh, we've got an inside investigator behind us here, just tapping away. Mr. Simba Mwate is seen. Looks like his calf is of Karim El Talk is giving yeah. him some jip. Oh, the back of the back of his Achilles, maybe. They're definitely getting some spray in there. And he's got some tape on it, actually, as well. So play will resume. Now in he's 60 got to. Uh, he's got to find a way if he's not feeling it physically. For his uh, two games all, Jonah Bryant's to centre in his final warm up now. He knows there's one more game before he steps on his court for his match. Sat sat in front of us. Yeah, he's, he's warmed up and cooled down more times than anything else so far. Yeah. But he'll be getting himself ready for the match after this. Whether they're going to be in this with a one-love lead or be, be behind, we shall soon find out. Play will resume in 30 seconds. So would you say that was a, a fourth game rest there, Andrew, towards the end? You know, he's, he's maybe struggling physically, he just wants to go all out for the fifth? I think so. I think he just had a little... He still made some effort to get to the balls, more than what I thought he was going to do. 15 seconds. That was a... Some positive steps onto the court there, though. 
Mm -hmm. He looks like there's a bit of uh, the a Egyptian bit of players. Is, is the Egyptian uh, contingent are uh, two games all got their hands together. England so to serve are, levels. You can sense the tension on that front row now. Yeah, indeed, it's kind of changed from what 15, 20 minutes ago. Oh, one well love. There's that perfect whip again. Yeah. Nailed it straight off. But Finn's looking positive. I think Finley's done a great job just to get himself back into this and be a bit more like, like I said, balanced and strong around the middle of the court. Not making any easy racket errors anymore. Down. He needs energy as Kareem is. Just, as, just into his uh, his crowd to yeah, pick him up. he is. We haven't seen that reverse burst from Finn. First time we've seen it. And in team squash, you always got your, your coaches and your fellow teammates to pick you up when you're down, and push you on when you're up. And that's a great shot. What a combination. Good service, please. Excellent form drop. At the moment, Finn's starting to look a little bit unplayable almost. That weight of shot into the back corners has been superb in games four and five. Really, it's given him such good foundation little, to build on. Yeah, he, he, he's... he's Reload. Really? Like, I think that, you know, that the, the composure that he's shown as well, like he was just flicking the ball a little bit in the first couple of games and El Torque was just firing on it. Anything he got loose off the walls that wasn't calculated, it was, it was punished with aggression, whereas here he just looks very balanced, looks calm. He's taking it one rally at a time. Great lob to get him out of trouble. See so that that caught the sweeping just came at the wrong time a little bit, I think. But there is no he's back at it. Four love. Four love. Yeah, it's oh, it, ten minutes ago he was match ball down and here he is. Back level in the fifth four love up. It's been a big change around here. Big swinging momentum. There's his Oh, that's an, early, that's an early ask. But it, Five love. You know, in the first two games, we were talking about how he was bottom of the bounce and not really getting to these balls at the front of the court. And here he is now, top of the bounce, taking them in, keeping them straight and tight. Tight. Six love. Sol running away from Karim here. Look at this though, it's tight against that wall, a nice squeeze Six against left. there. Just used all his strings to slow the ball down and get that ball in tight. It wasn't a great length, right? But it was yeah. tight to the wall, slow. Great technique to slow the ball down there. Tight again. Stuart to Egypt. To Egypt, and that right, here we go. Is this a lifeline for Karim? I think if you can learn from the the, the uh, third game, Finn, he, he rattled off a few errors after losing a point when he was up and got Karim back into it. If you can just keep him behind him and contain him a little bit for the next couple of rallies, hopefully get a cheap error out of Torquay. is better good defense excellent lob as well it's, it's a good rally this Finless looks like he's reading no. up oh looks like he's reading the game very well but there's that backhand Two, drop six. behind the service box a little error Karim just looks like he's just found himself a little bit here He's going to give it one last big push. There oh, we go. It's the first time he's made that this match. But for the time to go for it, it's when you're 6 2 up, right? I think when he was a. Was he match ball? Sorry, game ball? Or he was game match ball, ball down. Yeah, he match got. ball down, he went for it, landed in the middle of the court, got away with it. I think he put one in the tin when he had game ball himself. Like, you know, th that's not very calculated with his wrist, but he, he does commit to his game plan. He likes to stick to it, to be fair to him. Um, but I think here, 6 2 up, it's okay to take that risk, especially if it pays off like that and get yourself to 7 2. Yeah, and he's, he's going to get that. Oh, he's Look at the balance there in the front. Both boys are. Oh, that's another one. Oh, that's another one. 8 2. Yeah, 
it's just you know I thought he was going to flick one of the earlier Eight, ones out two. of that front corner but he went back in again managed to get that ball running away from carry him down the forehand wall Oh, oh, great drive. That was tight and from that Finn and he top managed spin to backhand yeah, drive. Top spin Three, backhand eight. drive. Let's Let's see the... for this one. This comes over the top of the ball. Wow. Let's see the Egyptian bench trying to fire him up as well. It's a long way back here. Talky can't afford to leave anything in that half court region now. Finley's got the skill just to produce a, a winner. Oh! I, I think no it's a good way to shot, but I th he was starting to struggle then on the tee there, Finn. 9 3. It just dropped like a stone there on that second bounce. His movement just went a little heavier than that, and that is for sure. He's pretty happy that that just died at the back. Huge opportunity here then for uh, England to take a one love lead in this match. Five point four lead, nine. four nine. He's still fired up though, Karim. Don't write him off yet. Oh, what a shot. Good counter. Oh, oh just clipped it in. Again, 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 Five they nine. say on that front front line. Down. Oh, six nine. A couple six, of quick nine. errors. Karim's just starting to come back into it. I think one more point here could get a little edge out. Stroke to England. There we go. Ten Stroke six. To England, Match out. ball. Ten six. I would have thought it got a little edgy there if it went design. seven nine. Yeah. But there we go. First match ball for Finn to complete an ama amazing comeback. Great turnaround if he can close it out. He's gone for his. One of my cross got next oh, again. Right. He's won it. 11 6. Match to England. Three games to two. What a performance. Finley Wivington comes back from two love down to take the first match for it's England. 11, Three games to two. 5 11. 14 12. 11-3, 11 11-6. Fair play massive. to him. Yeah, massive, massive comeback that from Finn. Massive amount of respect between both boys and, you know, Finn's gone straight over and he's shaking all the Egyptians' hands. Same as what uh, Karim did, he's shaking the hands of the, the English coaches. Yeah, a big embrace there from the English coaches because they know that was a... Excellent comeback by Finn there from two love down. Match ball down in the third. Showed great composure to it to close that one out. What a match. Yeah, great performance. What a what a comeback. You know, it looked like it was all down and out when he was match ball down. I've not seen him smile yet, but I know he's happy. Yeah, we've seen just his little smile from the two English coaches there as they went past. Yeah, they know how big that one is for this this tie. Yeah, Jonah, Jonah's uh, fist pumping him as he's uh, walking past the big embrace, having a little discussion about, you know, what's coming next. It's, it's quite big, actually, because, you know, Jonah can go in there now. He knows there's a one-love lead. Um, that pressure just releases a little bit. It's better than going in one-love down, which is what he was looking like 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago. So, Yeah, I'm not sure, entirely sure of Jonah and, and Sam's age but I think Jonah's one of the younger players yeah, so there's, you know, there's a lot of pressure on him in the final just to come try and get him back to uh, to get this match and maybe to clinch it for his teammates but coming right up Jonah Bryant will be taking on Salman Khalil in the second match of this final be right back
Stop. Can I have a new ball? All right, welcome back. We've uh, had a substitute in the commentary box. Coming off the field is Mr. Andrew Cross. Coming into the field, we have Mr. Simba Muwati, who is a social media phenom now on the Squash Stories of Facebook. The legend Muwati is back. Welcome, Simba. Uh, thank you, Mr. Butterworth. Uh, glad to join you here in the commentary box. I mean, what scenes we're seeing here in Nancy, France. I mean, 
Al Torki there seemed to be in cruise control until I, I would say the business end of the second game where you started to see a little bit of some sort of cracks coming up there but other than that he played one well of those first two games and then you could see at the end of the third uh, obviously an injury so um, unfortunate scenes there but we move on to the next rubber so. yeah I think uh, Finlay did excellently well there to dig deep especially with match balls down and, and coming through to win that match but yeah we've seen a lot of scenes here in Play Nancy France in 30 seconds. Um, few people uh, in the close proximity look a little worse for wear today but here we are WSF for this next match team uh, England leading one game to love final Jonah Bryan Jonah Bryan serving England to serve against Salman, Salman Khalil of Egypt, of Egypt now we're hearing Best that Jonah games. is the favorite for this match based on uh, some history and um, but Anyone who steps on the court playing to win has an opportunity to cause an upset or cause a stir. So, well, how do you think this one's going to go, Simba? I mean, not to uh, throw anyone under the bus here, but this is an interesting lineup that Egypt put out today. I don't think Salman was the right player to be in this match, but they have faith in their players, so. They've made a decision, but it's interesting that NASA is not in this match. So that is my only insight. But for a prediction, I think I'm going to go Jonah. If he can keep his head, he can earn England a world championship. Yeah, he's, uh, he had a, a great match with um, Mohamed NASA in the in the individual event, and unfortunately had an unfortunate end where he just lost his head a little bit and. It ended on a conduct stroke. You know, I think I definitely think he's going to be tested mentally here um, by the Egyptian who's going to be fighting for everything. So as long as he can just focus on his what he's good at, which is his his Down. skills and his his technique, and not get you not know, get flustered by the occasion, um, you could be seeing England uh, with some success today. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, you're right there, Luke. It's all about. In my opinion, Jonah keeping his head as he gets close to the finish line today, but um, hopefully he's learned from his individual tournament proceedings and, um, and is more stable. And out, one, two. Yes, lad. Oof. Yes, lad. Wow. Swing interference. Swing interference would mean One a stroke two. in my Khalil opinion. Khalil had a swing interference. Okay. So that's for clarification because I thought that was a stroke all day long. But he just clipped him with the racket. Um, minimal interference with the racket. Affected his shot, so they gave him a let. Glad you're on it, Mr. Barrow. Yeah, I just had to clarify because I was looking a bit confused. Also, what we don't want here is um, the referee to lose control of a match too, because it is going to be con it's going to be fiery. You know, both players are going to be going out there to either clinch the match or get their team back in it. So we want to make sure the referee is keeping the players in check and allowing the squash to do the talking. Opportunity here for Jonah takes it in short. Oh, well, it was a great get in the front right. The to Egypt and out. We won. Early leisure centre post there, Jonah. No let. No let. Four one. Yeah, Khalil's um, enjoying the ball right now. It's quite hot out there, and he's using the angles, using the side wall just to. Kind of keep a bounce. Doesn't look that balanced in the front right of the court. Um, great close out there from Jonah, yeah. firing himself up. Two four. Let's 
just watching his backhand swing now at that backhand corner. He uses his swing and his movement really well just to get up and a nice spring out of the corner. A little bit like Mustafa Asala in the back corner with his swing coming follow Down. through. And out, 5 or 2. Yeah, very different techniques here, obviously, from both players. Um, Jonah's got much more cocked wrist there on the, on the backhand and forehand side. It's pretty close to the ball. Out. He looks quite compact, doesn't he, in his string? Two five. It's very interesting what the World Junior Championships this past few weeks have seen, how, how squash can be played in so many different ways, and we've seen some funky old grips, haven't we, Simba? But if you yeah. can put the ball in the right spot, doesn't matter how you hit it, and as long as you can put it right in there. Three. But ultimately, when you're playing at the highest level, that the uh, the accuracy piece is so important. So it's really important to have a good technique. Yeah, I mean, I will agree with you there, Luke. I think technique is important, but this week is also seeing the importance of just practice. So whatever technique you do have is is fine, but like as much as you can get on there and practice, play a lot of tough matches, a lot of these players play PSA events now, so they're testing themselves against much older, more experienced people. Um, but we've seen some very different techniques all across the board. I'm a crucial part of this first game here, we've got 6-3, Salman. It's pretty much a steady start from him, looking to impose himself in the middle. Take the middle away from Jonah. Um, pushes him to the back there. Yeah, Jonah looking a little bit sluggish on the ball there. Yes, lad. Yes, lad. 6 3. Just a simple lad there um, as we move on. 6 3, the first game. Establish their length and width. Trying to get the ball all the way to the back and then on their crossbows, trying to get their ball into that side wall as much as they can. It'll be one of the longer rallies of the first game. Ball flying around, not being cleaned up tight to the walls yet. It's better. Back. Oh, lob. Seven, three. Good, Good drop in. Good drop in on the lob here. Something that I'm always in, I don't know, interested in is just the difference in the cultural approach to the game. Uh, when you see the Egyptian contingent, pretty fiery. Uh, demonstrative and at times coaching from the back wall. Um, the English are way more calm and collected in their demeanor. We've got the two coaches there, Josh, Josh Taylor and Adam Fuller. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty relaxed at the moment. One love up and the tie. Yeah, I think we saw that in the, in the, in the last game between Finlay and, and Kareem al Torki, right? In the first two games, every rally that Torki won, it was pounding his chest and the, 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 the contingent were off, off their feet and clapping and just trying to push him through. Whereas the English, English team just stayed calm and composed and, and trusted the, the, the tactics in hand. Um, I think we're seeing a similar kind of uh, vibe here as well. The, the game behind Salman Khalil is whether they can kind of channel that that energy over the period of the match versus uh you know being a little too early as they say Down. easy error there from Jonah. takes salman to a 9-3 lead here in the first game commanding position for egypt
I think it's important here for Jonah just to get a run of points uh, back on the board. You know, whether they, whether it's too far to come back in this first game or not is, well, is yet to be seen, but it's always good that even when you're down, just keep keep pull, plugging away early, and get in, especially early in the match oh. here, so that you can uh, Ten, three, you know, build ball. up momentum for that second game. Yeah, that's correct. You, you never know how the, the game can change. You might you know find your length and find that feel to the ball a little bit in those points and that you can take with you into the second game. Yeah, I've been pretty impressed by someone here. It just hasn't been flashing. Sometimes you don't need that for Down. someone Eleven, in this three, position. No reaction Egypt. as he takes Egypt the first game, 10 Pretty emotionally in control of himself, it looks. And um, this is going to be an interesting match because I think it's, it's all about Jonah here. It's basically he has to lift his game, get himself back into the match. Um, and hold his head um, together because Salmon isn't doing anything special, but he's just keeping himself in the game, keeping himself steady, composed, which I think is probably the biggest thing right now. Egypt in a 1 0 hole, so. Yeah, I think uh, in the last match as well, we, we, we were perfectly situated watching Jonah do his warm up, and you know, he had to warm up to maybe two, three times. Because um, the match went, you know, it was too low, match ball, he was ready to go, and then all of a sudden, 20, 30 minutes later, it's uh, his, 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 his English teammate had pulled it out. So maybe a little flat, maybe, you know, just kind of getting himself into it mentally now. He's in the match. Wasn't the best start that he would like, but he's got to find a way now. I think for Khalil, he's, you know, like you said, staying that composed, and well, picking him off, and keeping that seconds. ball alive. It's going to be important. Yeah, I mean, Khalil's kept the ball in play, as we can see with the replays here. He's just always getting the tough balls back, just making the player hit an extra shot, um, which is a big tip for our players out there, all our junior players, and even our, some of our amateur adult players. Just keep the ball out there. You know, sometimes you never know when your opponent's going to press the issue a little bit too fine and then end up hitting an, an error. Play will resume in 30 seconds. I think what you find as well with the best players is that their margin for error is always key. They, they don't shy away from taking on those top shots. I think we saw that from Zachariah, right? He's, as a 14-year-old, you don't have much fear um, in your body just yet. Um, and seconds. he took on the right shot at the right time. He's a good margin for error. It's some blinding Egypt shots and some tough moments throughout this event. Yeah, if, I mean, for our squash periods out there, the, the actual quality of this match Love is not the best, but there's a lot on the line, so you can tell there's a lot of nerves, and so maybe that's impacting Jonah, but if we can get this tied to a one all situation, one of my talents of the tournament, Zachariah, 14 Down. years old from Egypt, against one love. England's number two would be a fantastic match. Rally of the game. Down. Two lows. Uh, simple error there from Khalil. Apologies that that was the second rally of the game. Uh, it's a two minute lead to Jumba. to see if we can one day in squash get, you know, just an idea of mine, get the mic into the coaches' box between games just to hear what some of these coaches are saying to the players and Down. how they deliver a message. We love that. What do you think about that, Mr. Barrow? Yeah, I think that would be great, especially for, you know, coaches like ourselves who are always learning. Um, it'd be nice to see what, what goes on between games because there's so many different ways to obviously play the game and, and teach the game and everybody sees the game you know, sometimes similarly, but differently. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's been discussed now that the, the, the PSA pros are allowed their coaches back in the box. Yeah, that, I think that would be a really, really awesome, awesome feature. Yeah, so I think we'll, we'll throw that out there to Mr. Lee Beachel and his team out there at Squash TV. They do a tremendous job. Of, that could be an uh, interesting addition. You see it in the NFL, in the NBA. Oh, it's good. Um, a lot in the U.S. We see that. We'll get an insight into the coaches' standpoint. No. 
Um, no let. No let. Jonah asking for a let there uh, unsuccessfully. And out to one three. Someone put, pulls one, one back, one three. First game, second game. So here, look, Jonah's margin for error is actually improved. He's not really going too fine with his attacking shots. Trying to keep the ball above the team a little more than he did in the first game. A little bit more measured. Yeah, I agree. I think he's. Uh, I think he could be a little bit more proactive, especially in that middle part of the court when he created some opportunities. Kind of hit the ball with his, you know, his feet planted, and, and he's not quite, you know, maybe pivoted and got in a bit of a better position and used his space because he's got he's got the racket skills to be clinical. So you don't want to take it for granted when he's created an opportunity. He's just use his space a little bit. It's the first outward. <laughs> The first outward reaction there from someone. I mean, so that's the first time he's had a fist bump just to show his team that he's here for business. Back himself up. He's probably one of the more underrated players of this Egyptian team. He flew under the radar throughout the individual event, had one pretty decent win, but other than that, you wouldn't call him like a big time star you just you forget how young he is though um i think he's either 15 or 16 years old and you'll be back in two years time in another team event so egypt will definitely be a force then yeah it was an interesting one when we saw the uh, the team sheet we didn't expect to see him in the lineup today did we and you know they put his trust in him to perform he's doing well so far one game to love Again, just doesn't seem to do too much with the ball. Uh, you know, he keeps it pretty basic. It's the ball at the back of the court a lot, and it's not your typical all-out Egyptian attacking style. Um, but it seems to be very effective here. It seems to be neutralizing Jonah well. Yeah, he's not made many errors um, so far this match. He's, he's ready he's ready to pounce he just looks a little casual on the tee jonah um but i think maybe that's his style and he's like looking he's ready he, like you said there he's was, he was ready for that shot one he, want, he wanted to take his opportunity that one that came loose it's a long rally here uh -huh. great use of the two wall balls there just to throw something new in Give him a new angle That's to look brilliant. at. No wiping with the walls. No let. That's an interesting No let. Lob just one, one quite high enough and there, putting myself in a poor position. Yeah, I mean, there's an easy line on the inside if you see here on the replay. It's got to go in and around inside lines pretty big there. Seems to be jigging himself up, trying to get himself going here. It's just not really firing on all cylinders, but I definitely think Jonah has got another gear or two into his game where he can put a lot more attacking pressure onto Khalil. It was almost just becoming a bit of a counter puncher here. He definitely looks much more, much more in the match now. 
I think that first game, whether it was a little bit flat energy just because he was you know, warming up a couple of times and stuff and he just wasn't quite hitting his targets early on in the game, whereas now he much, looks much more comfortable out there. What a shot. That's a good shot. Up for five. Again, I've been really impressed with his composure here. Great margin for error as well, like you were talking about. Yep, just using the court to his advantage, you know. So we see the Egyptian team there eagerly watching their compatriot. Nice great shot. And up. Another Six great ball. use of the tightness using the wall, front wall. His great body position there. Great lunge, really balanced in the center of his body and it's allowed his strings to guide it in. Trips the side wall there, Jonah. Stroke to Egypt. Section of the second game, then. Yep. Great shot for Jonah to take a 7 5 lead. I yep. think he can push five. through here, Simba, and, and, tie, and tie it up at 1 1. Yeah, I mean, he could. He's got the skills to do it. It's a matter of if he executes or not. I think, as I said before, this match is on his terms. It's a oh, great hole. That's hold. an excellent shot. What a combination that was. You heard the strings on the cross court nick, and then just like on it so early there for a little counter drop. Great finish. Down. Could tell Nine, the five. disappointment was palpable from the Egyptians when they lost that first, the first one. They knew that they were in a big hole here and they not jinxed it, but I don't think they had as much faith as, as, much faith in this player Ten, five, as they would have had with others. So they're in a big, big hole here. Jonah's firing back on all cylinders now and uh, has game ball in the second game. This is where I would love that uh, coach's box. Tied up at 1-1 one, one with someone that maybe you're not fully Stop confident in. Um, you know, how do you get him fired up to get back on to those, uh, that confidence? Whereas Jonah now, he's, he's worked his way into the match and he, he looks very comfortable out there. Not doing anything extraordinary to win. He's just hitting his targets and being more more composed now. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if we were in the Egyptian corner, would would need a translator for this one. But um, I think we get Yala, wouldn't we? We'd get a couple of Yalas. We'd know, we'd know that one. Yala we'd, being come on yeah. in Arabic. Yeah. Um, but, Shout out to all our Egyptian friends out there. Yeah, I mean, we've got to, yeah, I've got to give it to Egypt, right? They, they produce tons and tons of squash players. They've kept the, the pro tour alive here during the pandemic. So shout out to the Egyptian Squash Federation. I mean, all the big programs out there, Wadi Degla, you know, Black Ball, just to name a few. I'm sure there's more. Uh, but they have, they've really helped squash stay alive and they continue to produce world-class players year on year. But... Right now, right now it looks like England, seconds. England's back on it. It's yeah, one I think all. it's uh, Bolake or Yabni. It means how are you in Arabic, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So hello to everybody over there. It's a great match here. You're going to be uh, supporting your boy Salman to get them back into this. England, uh, England's Jonah, though, has looked very composed in that game. It's got to be a difficult time here. We've got a really close view on... Play will resume in the England number two, seconds. who is warming up at the moment. Um, and Sam would be thinking, do I play? Will I play? Am I going to, you know, it's got to be tough not knowing whether you're going to be needed or not. But he's doing seconds. his best. So, um, but yeah, tied up one all here. One game all. Begin, begin the third game. Can hear pin drop in the, in the stadium here, or in the warehouse, should I say? Yeah, I think everyone's excited to see how this third game gets off to a. Of all. 
There is a lot of tension on the front bench from both. I think England are sitting prettier right now. With that one game to the one match to love lead with Finlay Wivington winning from two games to love and match ball down against Kareem El Torque in an excellent five game match. Yeah, right off the bat, you can tell Jonah's trying to increase the pace here. What a shot. Great oh, lob. Great use of height from Jonah there for the winner on the lob. backhand wall, different, different heights on the front wall being used, the tool from Jonah just to open it up, which is opponent forward, someone plays through, good for him there, Down. Oh, yeah. you know, it looks like error. he's reading the game very well Jonah as well there, he's like, he was onto that like a flash, if it, if it was just above the 10 I think he would have got that and counted or be able to defend it, just looks like he's he knows what he's doing now. Out. And Kalila. Uh, poor error. Down. Again, Khalil here just. He needs to keep the ball in play, doesn't need to force the issue. Uh, just basic error there from Jonah, trying to hit a cross court from behind his opponent. But, it's got it's to be more steady, Khalil, to be fair, in my opinion. Um, Jonah has, has upped his game for sure, but in response, Khalil has tried to force the issue. Now, it's another error from Jonah. Loose on the cross court, and a really aggressive volley there from Jonah down the line, died in the back, held his ground nice and firm as he is allowed to do so there. Carbon copy there of his drive. Both boys are a little bit loose on the cross court, so there's lots of volleys coming in. Yeah, I'd love to see a bit better width from both players. Uh, seems to be kind of not really going into the side wall at all and allowing the opponent to volley. Yeah, the, the pace has definitely gone up as well here. There's that cross court getting volleyed. Not that. That. Oh, a little harsh. But the cross court wasn't wide enough. <laughs> really like Jonah's reaction there. Did not contest the decision, just moving on. Kept play. himself focused. Jonah's pace has definitely gone up. He's taking the ball earlier, putting a lot more bite on his shots, twisting and turning his opponent. 
one straight, one cross, basically just to get him going. And once he has an opportunity, looking to take the ball in short. Seems to be a good game plan right now for Jonah. Nicely used to the hold there, getting up to the front court. Trying to break up the rhythm. Some of these rallies are pretty long now. So there's a lot of resetting and rhythm changing. They didn't get off the ball there. No lead. That is a, a very interesting no. call. Six four. Don't quite understand how they can get no lead. Yeah, I didn't see Jonah clear the ball there. I mean, I think he got away with one. I mean, if we can get a replay, that would be amazing. But you can see here, Jonah would play the ball. Just he sat on the ball a little bit and can't really see what line Khalil was supposed to take. Oh, no complaints from the Egyptian. He's uh, he's also thinking up. He's staying focused on his game plan. Great dying length. Perfect swing. Yeah, Jonah's in the commanding 7-4 lead here in the third game. He's hitting all the right spots now, Jonah. Look at that length, which is dying into the sidewall at the back. Yeah, I mean, I think his width has improved too, so... He's doing much better width. Variation when he's under pressure, lifting the ball. Great shot there. Yeah, he's again just slowing it down. Oh, that's going to be a stroke. stroke yeah. You just see there when he was hitting that dying length, it just clips the sidewall right in, right in the back corner. It just slows the ball down so much that the, the other player, Salman, has to really dig it out. And as you saw there, he didn't quite execute that defense in, well enough. And it comes out into the middle and he gets his stroke. But it was all built by that dying length. So important to get good weight of shot into the back two corners and not overhit it. And I think his technique is, is allowing him to do that, get the strings down the back of the ball. Good work from both players here, just playing the ball, keeping the rallies going, not asking for easy lets or strokes. Lifting out the pressure there, Jonah. Great push here from Jonah to stay in the rally. from Jonah. His length has improved dramatically and through the course of this match. Uh, it's causing Khalil a lot of trouble. He's not spending a lot of time on the tee anymore. Yeah, he took, took a little risk there, but he was up, you know, up four points. Um, worked his opponent in a good long rally. Maybe just popped it in there a little casually, but you know, if he's, if he's more balanced and his technique will allow that to just keep in above the tin. Just took a little risk, but he'll go back to his length and width now and create a new opportunity. So ferocious on that far and volley. Great get. Back in it. Sometimes it doesn't have to look pretty, you just got to get that ball back, right, Simba? Yep, sometimes you just got to get the ball back and play. Talk to Egypt. Uh, some messy squash there, a lot of balls in the middle of the court. Khalil seems to be fighting back, 6-8. There's life in the Egyptian. Yes, lad. Yes, lad. Six, eight. Interesting decision there, actually, because he, he did well, Salman, to actually play the ball. When he, you know, when Jonah lifted the ball off the, off the sidewall, he did well to play it. We've seen a lot of people ask for those and try and get an, an early stroke. 
Um, and then Jonah seemed to have to get out of the way as quick as he could. And yes, there was a little bit of contact, but did he cause that himself? Yeah. But so he got a let. Yeah, from what I saw on the replay just there, I just didn't think that would have been a let. It's just, it's just tripped over his opponent's leg. It's got to be tough now. I've gone from 8 4 to 7 8, a couple of errors. See if he can dig deep and hit his spots again. Salmon's on the charge. Talk to England. He chose to play the ball and he stitched himself. He's fanned it down, landed on the tee. 9 7. That's a lifeline for Jonah. He's just gone to the towel to uh, wipe his face and he's clean off his goggles. Two good rallies from him here would uh, see him win the game. 9 7. Just noticed a little quirky thing about Jonah that I'm gonna test out, and I, I hope our viewers can see what I think I'm. I've just noticed about him. It happens when he's not actually in the rally, but before every rally. But I'll, I'll keep it as a teaser. All right, I like that. A little challenge. We're gonna look out for a little quirky trait from Mr. Bryant. That Simba's picked up on and obviously has intrigued him. Uh, very nervy drop there from Salman. So like an in interesting roar from uh, Mr. Bryant. 10-7 game ball to take a 2-1 lead. Here we go. Big point. Yes, Simple, but simple that. This clipped him on the backswing there. Yeah, I think if he swung fully through that, he would have hit him. So did well to stop it, but just clipped him. Got a let. 10 7 game ball. Yeah, Salman hasn't done anything different here. So it appears to me that he's kind of only plays one way. Stroke to Egypt. Yeah, so he's hit him on the back. Yeah, he's not really there. forced the issue, has he, uh, Salman, too much? He's kind of been uh, quite safe with his attacks. Like we said earlier, he had a good margin for area. He's playing a lot of balls to the back. He's not really taken it to um, Jonah and put him under a lot of pressure with an aggressive attacking game. No. Seems pretty content to just hammer it to the back of the court. But for Jonah to do something and then try and attack off something Jonah does. Pretty basic counter punching player. But we have to do a little more than just counter punch to beat Jonah Bryant today, I think. It's going back to my trait that I noticed from Jonah. Let's see if he does it after this point. Well, hopefully for Jonah, he'll be sat in his seat with his coaching team after this point. Ledger centre boost from the back corner. Change up the angle. Well cleaned up. Gets himself back on the tee. Oh, it's heavy. Someone's doing better length and width. It's getting there. It's just still again. I'm not sure he's doing enough of the ball. Oh, he's hit a 10. 9 10. Well, I kind of. Started this discussion, but I think if you notice here, Quickly. viewers, Jonah doesn't step on the lines. A little Nadal esque. When he walks back, he steps over every line. Eagle eyed Simba. Probably, probably doesn't step on the cracks and the pavement either. Stop, please. Wow. Stop, please. 10 all. Some fire in the Egyptian bench there as he got that decision. Oh, that was close. Oh. Yes, Vlad. Yes, Vlad. Oh, he's yeah. got a little walkabout here, uh, uh, Jonah, in the reserve return off the back wall. Settle in. 10 all. Tie break.
scrambling. It's good work here on the backhand wall. Slowing it down just to get himself some time. Salmon's trying to pick up the pace, make it ferocious. Very good containment here from Jonah. Just clipped the sidewall there. It was the right combination. He'd used the balls pretty well. Just didn't quite get that ball running through straight without the sidewall. Unfortunate, but it's a stroke. 11 10. Khalil turned the game around on its head here. It was 8 4 down in this game. Yeah, he's been pretty he's been pretty steady, you know. He hasn't done too much, but he's kept the ball in play. You know, that's the biggest thing I think he's done here well. Um, making Jonah force the issue. And then pounces on any opportunity he gets. Great balance in the drop. Oh, perfect volley into the space. Yeah, I didn't seem to, I don't think Jonah did much there. So no let, simple no let. Jonah forces the issue again. It's another game ball for Khalil. leave anything loose around the middle now Salman's going to be uh, chomping at the bit for an opportunity to close this game out top shot in nice lob yep. chance a little chance here it is going to be he needed Rowan Damming's racket there to hit that backhand kill that he's got Tight. What oh. a laugh. Yeah, what, what a shot. shot. What a shot. Beautiful shot. It took a lot of courage to lift that high and soft. One floorboard. That was great shot. Tight. Tight. A very, very clean match. Both yeah. players trying to play the ball. Nice tight drop there. Oh. Gets game ball again. Excellent tight drop. And then uses his space and balance well to put the ball back in there. Khalil, Khalil seems to be feeling it physically here. He's uh, bent over. He, ne he needs this game. His teammates are egging him on, but I think he's feeling it physically big time here. Patient look on the backhand. Jonah looking for that forehand of his. I like how he's trying to be defensive, but he's not being passive. That was a big game. Would you please wow. Close yeah. it out, 1412. Big reaction from the Egyptians. Interesting to see how he plays physically in the next game. As Simba pointed out, he's bent over, waiting to serve at that rally. And yeah. maybe uh, Jonah can pick up, uh, maybe picked up on that body language trait that shows when you're tired bending over, just you know, giving your opponent some clues. What a game! Yeah, as you look at the replays here, I mean, Jonah did a lot of good things, but then simple errors like that backhand drop from the back have resulted in him going down 2 1 in games here. It's a 1 0, uh, 1 game deficit. I still think Jonah's got a lot to say about how this match will end. Um, again, as I mentioned, I think Khalil is struggling physically, sig significantly struggling. Um, and if Jonah can keep the ball out of the tin, 
continue to attack maybe with some margin. He's got a he's got a shot. He definitely can win this match still. I think he just yeah, has to be a little bit more patient. He was in cruise control, wasn't he, at eight four and then you know, Khalil just stepped up the court, I felt, and just picked up the pace a little bit. And uh, Drona tried to uh, try to slow it down and play some really great defensive shots, and tried not to be too passive by stepping up and volleying uh, and trying to change that pace. But yeah, he made a few errors at crucial moments. One on there, just on the replay, was, uh, t he had game ball there, going for the cross court nick at 10-8, and hit the uh, hit the middle of the tin. Yeah, I mean, frantic activity in the Egyptian camps. They're, they're massaging a leg. They're doing all sorts of things just to keep Khalil going here. I, I, can't, I, can't, see, I can't see how he can get through this physically, to be fair. Um, he's going to have to push really hard in this game. Um, they're doing everything they can, though, to keep him fresh. In 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure no matter how his body's feeling, he's going to push himself to the limit, right? Yep. I think if you're up two games to one to get your country back to, to get this to a deciding tie, he's going to be pushing himself all the way. I can see in the background there uh, on the tennis court, the side of the glass court, we've got Zakaria doing laps right now. He is jogging, sprinting, jogging, walking. He's ready. If this game goes, uh, goes in the favour of the Egyptians, that boy will be ready to play squash. Yeah. This is this is interesting now. Momentum is firmly in Khalil's favor. Just has to push physically, I think. Just to keep himself in this match. Down. It's a 10 from Jonah. It's got to be difficult though, Luke, what do you think about these players who are warming up, not warming up, stopping their warm-up, getting ready, emotionally don't know whether they're going to play or not. It's well, got to be difficult. I think there's a, there's a big difference between um, watching Jonah warm up whilst he was watching Finn and, and, and seeing Sam Osborne Wild. I have not seen Sam um, around the court for a, a good portion of this match. I think he's taken him off, off to the side. He's probably being kept up to date by the score, maybe checking it on online. But he's he's keeping himself in his zone. Um, I think that's such a good tactic. You don't want to get too tense with the emotion of the game that's going on right now. I think he's he's probably just you know keeping himself to himself, having a natter and keeping his mind on on what he needs to do, not getting too involved in the, in the match that he can't control. Right? Yeah, that's true. I'm back to the proceedings on the court here. A little for good cross court lob, trying to reset the rally. Joanna still forcing the issue. A lot of this match is going to depend on how many balls Khalil can get back. Because he is, in my opinion, flagging. I'm not seeing it just yet. I think this he looks he looks like he's still got a spring in his step. And I think that I, I love Khalil's follow through. He uses like a nice flow of it to help his movement. So if he is feeling it physically, his swing's helping him move around the court. It's like a quite free, a free swing. Two love lead, great start for him. Yeah, it was a lengthy rally there. Could have got a lot of balls back. Had a nice drop shot winner. The use of height. Trouble. Stop doing it. That's Stop doing it. And I have one two. lift from Khalil. The leisure centre makes its appearance again. No. Oh boy. Simple tin from simple error there from Jonah. Jonah's doubled over now. He's uh, feeling it I think as well physically. It did get warmer a little bit in here Luke didn't it? it, it the last it, 10 minutes the, or so. The, the temperature's certainly risen since we've sat down here. The, you, know, you can feel the tension in the crowd. So um, 
but also, yeah, I think it, here it's just like it's going to be a mental battle as well. I think Jonas, you know, like you said, the body language has changed just a touch. It looks like he's giving a few signs that maybe he's feeling it physically and he's creeping some errors in here. I think he's got to hang tough. It's another error. Squash can change in a few shots, a few rallies. Um, so it's just important that he just keeps digs deep for himself here to get keep himself in it and don't let Khalil run away with it. Yeah, again, it's been on Jonah here a lot. Again, made, made a couple of errors going for that drop shot. There's another error. error. There. Six oh, one. My goodness Six gracious one. me. So, not great times for the England camp who still remain composed on the bench. Yeah, I just saw a little look at Finlay Wivington there who's slumped in his chair. Great lob. He's feeling a little bit flat for his teammate. Maybe needs to pick him up a little bit. Oh Where my goodness. Got a from everybody. A lot. They, they're waving, gesticulating him to get going, get the ball and serve again. The Egyptian uh, contingent, 7 1. Was wrong about Khalil's physicality, he's pushing through the barrier here big time. I, I honestly feel it's got a lot to do with his swing, he's very flu fluid and he, he's, he's, he's got a nice spring to it. Combining his swing and his movement, Hello. it's a great shot. Now he's got a mountain to climb, Simba. I think it does. Sure does. I'm not sure there's many mountains in England, maybe a couple in the Lake District. Peaks. Yeah. But taking a lot of time between get, between points here. Jonah just trying to compose himself again. Gotta stick in there if he wants to get back in this match. It's a long way back, but it is not over until it's over. Khalil looks good, he's, got, he's bouncing around. It's back in it. Shows you how much I know about fitness, Luke. Uh, completely got that wrong. So I think both of us are in that camp, Simbo. With our Peloton scores. Yep. Let's get those puppies up. Got to shout out some of the Peloton warriors out there, Mr. John Russell's another point, 9-1. What a turnaround from Khalil. I'm sure John Russell and Alex State from England are cheering on, watching in, watching for the English boys. 9-1. From 8-4 up, Jonah in the third game. Seen himself 9-1 down. Facing a, a defeat. Imminently. But let's see if he can keep going. I think uh, we might see a risk taken here from uh, Salman just to get himself to uh, match ball. We'll see. Oh, it's too loose. Oh, it's too loose. 10 yeah. 2. 10 2 match ball. Yeah, this composure has been pretty good here from Salman. Very composed. Match ball, Egypt. Take this tie to 1 0. Force the decider. It's tight. Opportunity. No, oh, let's it bounce. There's going to be some scenes here from the Egyptian camp if you can pull this off. Gonna get. Is that it? No, it's still oh. going. Nine. Oh, is it? It's in. And out. Three, ten, much more. You see Zachary is still bouncing around around the tennis court over there. He's, he's ready to get on court. But it's not over yet. Yeah. Still seven match balls here for Egypt to tie this final. He is going to erupt. Oh, very edgy, very edgy. Jonah will enjoy that one. Clipping the tin from the middle of the court.
stroke. Malet. Oh wow. Malet. Five ten. That was wrong. Four. Wrong again, Simba. That is a no let from the judges. Referees today. Great length there. Chance. Good dig from Jonah. Nice little trade off of the drops. Still in it. What a length there. That's what a get. What a get. The Egyptian bench thought that was a winner. Yes, lad. Wow. Yes, lad. He gave that as a stroke Five, ten, earlier. He gave that as a stroke earlier. Continue, please. Jonah goes back to the Stop. tower. Continue. Five ten. Will Salman go for one? I just don't think it's in his game, to uh, be honest. Yeah, I've not, I've not seen many risks taken from him. He's got a chance to take one. Another great get. What a lob. Yeah, it's attacking with margin again. Half court. Hitting into the space, you know, he's not doing anything too fancy, trying to keep the ball in play, Salman. He's got to be careful with his width, Jonah. Salman's ready to pounce in that middle of the court. Keeps clawing it back. What a brave lob. Wow. He got that close. way up there. That was centimeters away from clipping the line. Oh, he's gone the wrong way. This is physical, this rally. Tough rally for both players. It's another great lob. Great change of pace here from Jonah. Middle of the court. What a lob again. Gotta keep his composure. Great rally. This is a great rally. Wow. The rally's just gone over the two minute mark. Oh, scrappy. This is a monster rally. He's got it again. What an excellent ball. Space. Some great recoveries. He's gone for a risk. Oh, and he's clipped the 10. What a rally that was. Over two and a half minute rally there, Simba. Some excellent lobs there from Jonah. And he's got back to his compo self. He's hitting his targets. He's lifting. He looks comfortable. But he's, he's, he's still four match balls against him. Can he do it? May I, 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 I think he can. I think Khalil got this, to be fair. I mean, surely. Do you four. want to keep getting? He's got to do some great gets there. I think Khalil's got a risk in him. I think he's going to go for a kill or a, a nick. Careful with his wit. It's a great lob. Oh. I'll we'll just clip the back, Nick.
Fair play to Khalil. He's keeping that ball alive. He is not going anywhere near He's not anything. taking these match balls for granted. That could be a stroke. Ooh. Yes, flat. Oh. Yes, flat. I think it's a Sistem. simple let there. Match ball. Left side. Egyptian thought it was a no let. I thought it was a simple let. A little interference. He didn't like the decision there. So here, here we go again. Get out of the way. That's, oh, he's played it. I can't believe he's played it. <laughs> he's gone for the corkscrew. It's all happening here. Yeah, Is it? That's a match. What a reaction. What a reaction. <laughs> what a reaction. Oh, there you go. What a match from Salman Khalil. I think a lot of people written him off in this match, but wow. what a performance. He kept that ball alive. And he's kept, he's brought Egypt back from the uh, jaws of defeat to bring this title to a deciding match with Sam Osborne Wilde and Mohamed Zakaria. What a match from, the, from Sam and Khalil. To be fair, I am gobsmacked at that. I can't. Speechless. I, I'm speechless. I have the no physicality. Words. <laughs> the physicality paid off. The physicality. What a turn for the words. Wow. Wow. Happy to say, for all you squash purists out here, this young man from Egypt that's about to take the court, Mohammed Zakaria. I am going to say, remember that name. 14 years old. The weight of a nation on his back. He's he is a, grinning fun. away. He is a very fun player to watch. I hope we all come back here, get a little drink, get something to refresh you, and come back to this deciding match between Egypt and England for the World Junior Championship. Take, so, take a look here at Sam Osborne Wilder sat right in front of us. He is cool as a cucumber. But I'm sure inside. He's thinking, I can do this for my country. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a cool character, is, is Sam. He's, he's, uh, he's got that fire and that aggression in his game. This yeah. is going to be an interesting match. Very exciting. So stay tuned. Uh, we're going to do another substitution. Uh, we're going to bring back in Mr. Andrew Cross. So thank you all for listening to my drivel. Yeah, thank you, Luke, for your time. I think... Uh we need to get other people involved here. We, so. need a, we, need a, we need to change it up. We need freshness for this deciding match. So enjoy the match. I'll be in the stands. All the best.
half time. time. Welcome back, everybody. Um, Simba Mwati here, commentating with the, the World Team Championships. Um, happy to introduce Mr. Andrew Cross, seconds. the head coach of the Malaysian squash team. He's back here in the comms box with me. Welcome, Andrew. Hey, Simba. That was a brutal second match. Some unbelievable rallies there at the end to finish it off. Yeah. Unbelievable is the right word. Um, couldn't have scripted it any differently or better, I guess, but I am very excited for this match. Um, Sam, Sam Osborne Wild from England um, against Mohamed Zakaria for all the marbles. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really, really, really tough match. Um, obviously, we, we played against Sam yesterday, and uh, Amishan took him down in four, but it was brutal. Some real tough rallies, so it's going to be interesting how how he backs up today. Um, and then of course, we've got the young, the young Egyptian, Zakaria, who uh, you know, he, he played a decider yesterday. So will that count in his favour? They played well yesterday. He handled the pressure well against a difficult Pakistani opponent. So we'll be I'll be interested to see how this how this gets off. Yeah, for those of you who haven't had an opportunity to see Mohamed Zakaria play, he in my opinion, if not it's probably one of the youngest, if not the youngest person here uh, in the draw in the tournament and uh, 
for me is probably the most impressive. The stuff he's able to do at such a young age, his court craft, his street smarts out there, um, pretty impressive. Yeah, let's not forget he's, he's 14 and he, he made the semi-finals of the individual event. Um, I thought yesterday he was the way he handled him, himself within the court yesterday. It's pretty impressive, it was a tough match yesterday. And a very nice straight drive One, there down two. the forehand side. Yeah, a couple of things to note here. What impresses me most with Mohammed is his, weight, his shot selection and then his weight of shot when he's going to the back of the court. He rarely overhits the ball. Um, so your opponent's always reaching out to go get that ball in the back. He uses every single part of the court as well with his attacking shot. So, very difficult customer. Yeah, just a little bit unlucky, but just as you spoke about there, it's, you know, it's hitting all four corners nice and early. Even though Sam's gone, he's made three errors so far, Zachariah, but, you know, I, I don't think that's going to stop him from keeping going. Yeah, pretty free-flowing player. Um, he's young, so he's got a lot of exuberance, bounces around and does that so I think Sam's best bet here is to make this very very physical stroke, stroke there for Zachary I mean, if you asked anyone in the Egyptian camp who would they want to have to close out a world championship, I think they would all pick him. Um, he's, in my opinion, the most skilled player. He's also super cool under pressure. Such good lines. You know, he's really taking Sam away. Yes, let. Yes, let. Yeah, I think he could have played that, but he, he really takes Sam away from the middle. He takes him all the way into the front. He takes him all the way into the back. Yeah. Sam's, Sam's really strong around that middle backhand area. Just taking it nice and early at the back of the box, usually on the backhand, and he's able to keep it nice and straight. stretch there to keep that nice and straight and tight. Great counter drop. <laughs> Big fan of that. Uh, the technical side of the game and just a uh, quick question for you and Andrew coming up shortly on the two different techniques we have on offer here today. Um, backhand area there from Mohamed Zakaria appears to me that uh, Sam is probably working with either like a, a Rob Owen type coach or someone of that nature. He's got a very... Yeah, he is, he is working with, with, with Rob Owen, I believe. He's put together some really big points here at the moment and he's you know, he's starting to dictate a little bit of play there around the middle especially he's really strong and he's able to, to generate pace onto the ball 6-3 lead for Sam Osborne wild
That one. Simple error. Three. Strong start here, actually, from Sam. I think what Zacharias is finding a little bit hard is that the ball just keeps coming back all the time. And as I was talking to Josh the other day, he was saying that Sam can really back up after tough matches. And I think that's something that we're seeing so far. Zacharias throwing a lot into the front, and Sam's just been able to get up there and keep it away. Keep it away. You know, get himself back in the rally and keeps forcing Zachariah to go closer and closer to the top of the tin. Yeah, I mean, the straight line hitting from Sam has been really, really good so far. Oh. He really closed out the court, made it very hard for Zachariah to impose himself with his uh, wide repertoire of shots. Seems to be giving up this game. Yes. I thought we were three all not so long ago, and it's quickly run away to 11 3. That one. 11 3 game to England. England leads one game to one. Interesting to see. I mean, when I was sat up at the back just now, watching the second match, Zachary is on there. He's on the, t the tennis court next to us. He's been warming up for about 45 minutes. I'm not sure if he's uh, maybe used up too much energy while he was over there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw him do that before the semifinals as well. Just had like an insanely long warm up. Felt like that one was easily over an hour. Um, and I think something he has to look at in the future. But right now you've got literally the entire Egyptian contingent looking over him talking to him I don't know if that's a tactic of some sort but you have all five of their boy players two of the head coaches and the manager yeah I, I count nine over there at the moment <laughs> now they've they all, were all in left. 60 seconds they seem to be trying to cool him down with a bit of water all over his face a strong start for Sam exactly yeah. what he would have wanted yeah you know he really asserted himself around the middle of the court there he really dominated from three all yeah i agree with you i mean it was very very steady there his straight line hitting in particular was very impressive in 30 seconds but i would not count this kid out zachary has got a ton of tricks in there he's going to find a way i think to just maybe get himself back in this match hopefully so far, it's been pretty straightforward. So England lead. 15 seconds. One game to love in the first game of the decider for the World Junior Championship. Zachary is setting off for the cross court there. Sam Osborne Wilde just keeping the ball nice and straight. Not giving him a lot of options. Uh, I don't think Sam's going to be too disappointed by that. You know, he's really limiting Zachary here to the shots that, that he can hit. Occasionally he's left one up, which Zachary has got to hit a really good shot to beat him yeah. at the moment. Everything just keeps coming back. 
tight again. It's a great straight line there. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful floor first, stayed tight, got the squeeze. Looks really confident at the moment, Sam. Especially on this side, it's, you know, it's really fine that line and the length that he needs. So Sam's been really disciplined to hit the back corners here. He's not, yeah. he's not really taking anything into the front unless he's really certain. So it's really limiting Zachariah in what, what he can do. Zachariah is the one that's trying to take it in and Sam just keeps keeps sending him deep. And only when he's like really confident that he's in a strong position is he gonna try and take it short. It's a good rally here. Pretty extensive rally. A lot of a lot of shots being played by both players. Yes, sir. It's interesting movement here from Zachary after he's this shot. Doesn't really clear, does he? His way and he's able to reach the ball. Yeah, you see, just, just when he got in a little bit of trouble there, Sam, his shot quality into the front just not quite as as good as what he wanted it to be. And Zachary's, you know, he's good at that, so. That is a great drop. Drop shot would not there from Sam. Yeah, he's not. He's only really going short if it if it's up there. He's not going to force anything from the back. He's going to make Zachariah work really, really hard if he wants to win this. Talk about discipline. This is some really good discipline squash here from Sam. He's really sticking to his tactics well. He's, you know, they've obviously given him a good a good game plan and he's executing it to perfection at the moment. Yeah, he sure is. Stroking. I think he's been Didn't clear enough. penalized for his movement here off the ball. Didn't clear enough. Oh, yeah. At first, when I saw it, I thought... I thought he'd just maybe just done enough. But, yeah, as you see the replay, just kind of stuck in there a little bit. Get out of the way there. Good shot. No. Just no. Seven. I think that just dropped in. Yeah, it looked good to me. There's no reaction from the bench. So they're obviously all the crowd out, only the Egyptian crowd outside, so it is good as well. Was it another error here? It's all a little bit one-way traffic at the moment, Simba. Yeah, it's all one-way traffic for sure. I think Sam's got a commanding position here. Yeah, 
and has gone through and played it. Stroke to Egypt. Just didn't quite get the line on that volley. Yeah. Yeah. You see, he's set early for these for the cross courts, Sam. You know, something we we spoke about last night when we played. You know, he really is strong in that area. You've got to try and take that away from him. Serve. <laughs> for it off the return of serve, he must be very, very confident. Very confident. I mean, he's now at 9 2 up in the second. It's another error from Zachariah, and he's, he's looking out the back at the Egyptian crowd, and he's not really. You know, it's a little bit... Oh, that's a fantastic Trap. shot. Wow. But there's not much encouragement from that Egyptian crowd at the moment. They're all sat with their arms crossed. Yeah, they don't seem to be showing them any sense of, like, positivity or belief in what we could achieve here today. Stroke to Egypt. Carry on, carry on. Yeah. The referee just telling the players to keep the, the pace of play going here. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I haven't seen one of them go to the towel box yet. Really, that's you know taking a long time. They're not they're not trying to break up play. No let. No let. It's minimal interference there. No let. Five. This is getting a little interesting. Small comeback. 6-10 left. He's just starting to get back into it here, Zachariah. Yeah, Sam's got to be careful here not to... not to play Muhammad back into the match or let him come back into the match. Yeah, he set up really good to 10-2 and lost him a bit the last few. Wants to be giving Zachariah as much confidence as uh, for game three. Sam takes the command of two love lead here. Um, yeah, Zachary is hitting his feet, I mean, hitting his thighs there a lot. Just uh, insinuating maybe that is a little heavy. It's interesting that only one has gone across this time. There's not there's not nine of them stood around him anymore. It's just one person or two people, sorry, sat sat discussing with him. Yeah. I mean I think um, again you just gotta got a feel for the young man. He's played a lot of squash over these two weeks. He's played some really good squash, but it's been a long two weeks. Um not too sure that he's been given enough breaks and days off. I'm not sure the team management side of things, but they did need him for big matches. Um, and so they're in this final because of him. But I don't know if he's physically ready to back up. Play will resume in 60 seconds. I have been wrong before about my <laughs> um, take on the physicality of the players in this event, so didn't think the last match was going to end the way it did, but there we go. I think if anything we've seen over the last couple of weeks, it's that coming back from two down at this venue is uh, is not impossible. Play will resume in 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, it's the, condi it's the conditions, right? Like, just, it's so hard. Um, the players are all very skilled, very fit. And when you're playing for your country, I think there's just that added edge. 15 seconds. So, Yeah, indeed it is. 
It's really hard to explain how hot it is in here when I was sat up at the back just then. It's really hot. There's not much air circulation going on. So, yeah, the players are going to have to adapt. England leads to games to love. Yeah, I mean, Mohammed's going to have to play really well here to get back into this, but it's going to take, um, it's going to be a massive mountain to climb because Sam's is right on top of him here. It hasn't been too physical today, I don't think, the match, so. Now that I think Sam's going to have to, in the last few, at the end of the rallies there, at the end of the second, he kind of opened up a little bit more, started going in short. Um, the discipline, I think he needs to maintain that discipline to keep it in the back two corners consistently. <laughs> so he's left too short here and Zachariah straight onto them. You know, this doesn't want to be losing that length that he's had to build that two love lead. Zachary is definitely a momentum player. You see when he wins points, he runs over to serve, tries to keep himself going. No. Nice little change of angle there from Sam. He normally plays those in straight, so a nice little change up just to send it cross court. There you go. This is what I was talking about. You've got to be careful with this kid once he gets confident. You can see it as well, the way he's bouncing the ball now and in between rallies, it's, some of things just changed in him. Great shot there from Sam. As we've been talking, he's really strong around that area. It's gotten a little bit different in the England camp now. Interesting. Um, the two coaches from England, Josh and Adam, are much more enthusiastic and a little bit more jittery. I think they can sense that there's a world championship on the line that they, they have a shot at getting here. So. Quite see that sound. It's almost like he just mistimed his step there for a moment. Yeah. get it deep enough that cross court yeah again it's just a little bit short here yeah. i also think his sam has just started to open up the court a lot more a lot more cross courts um wasn't playing that many cross courts at the beginning straight line hitting was kind of what was his bread and button bread and butter and was working well for him yeah and i think he wants to get back to that as, as quickly as possible really it's, so he's just found losing his range a little bit. Yeah. You can see Zachariah, he wants to get on with things. Lost his accuracy, his length and width. Sakura like looks like he's probably going to end up taking this this third game. Great drop shot from the back. 
Again, it's more success in hitting in straight lines than it is opening up with, with cross courts. Good angle that he got. Yeah. He got that pretty easy. Red ball. Yes, sir. I mean, that was. That was... She called the ball not up. It was starting. I saw it good. So the reason is yes, let. And no further comments on court. Thank you. I just got nipped in the bud right there. The referee being very assertive, um, telling Muhammad. No further comments. I thought the ball was good, though. Uh, yeah, the ball was definitely good. And, and you know, Mohammed was in a good position to hit a straight drive winner, probably down the forehand side, but he probably called it a little bit too early. But it was didn't even look close to down, to be honest. And obviously, we're in a good angle here because we can see straight in line with us. Yeah. No. Nah, I just took a good look at his opponent there. He did, just, yeah. Uh, see how he's doing. Um, something I think some juniors could learn from. Not in an intimidating way, just to check in to see if you can get any signals as to where your opponent's at. much more like what we saw in the first couple of games. Good retrieval. Good retrieval from Mohamed. He's, he's built a 9-4 lead here. Sam just deep, taking some nice deep breaths in. Trying to refocus on his game plan. pace of the game has dropped off a little bit as well. I think Zachary is controlling the pace at which this match is being played at no. now. Um, he finds himself with uh, yeah, it's... a couple of match balls. Yeah. See, I mean, yeah, 10 minutes ago I wouldn't have said this was going to be the case. No, nope, not at all. But here we are. Match ball. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Game ball for Mohammed. Getting a little bit ahead of yourself there, Simba. Yeah. A long day, a long tournament, a long night. Great lob. Opportunity. Oh. A little bit interested in the front corner there. What a shot. What a shot. Backhand drop winner there. Sam's just asked for a new ball for the third game, for the fourth game. Um, yeah, Josh. Josh was straight into him then as soon as he came off to ask for a new ball. Uh, I think that's probably a good decision. The ball's gone a little bit soft. It's gone a little bit cold. It's going to suit Zachary a little bit more. Yep. Good insight there, Andrew. So I think yeah, the ball's just been thrown back in. First, I thought he was going to ask for an injury timeout, which uh, looked like, but he. You know, he's asked for a change of ball. He's got to somehow try and get the pace back into this game here, I think, I think Sam. Yeah, I agree. Oh, no, I, if I was him, I would go back to hitting Play straight, straight lines and, seconds. you know, trying to cut down Zachariah's angles. 
Um, and for Zachariah, I mean, he wants to keep keep going. You know, he's starting to tease Sam into going into the front a little bit too much and playing off a few angles. Just the three coaches this time, uh, not a full contingent. Got a lot of ice on his neck and head, actually, at the moment, which uh, just goes to show again how hot it is in here. Anything will be the, the, co the coaches can do to keep their players cool is, uh, is being utilized. You can see the way he is, though. Look, I mean, how quick he's walking back into court. England he asked for a new ball, was requested. He wants to get on with it. This is the old one. Yeah, he wants to still play with the old one. He's... Oh, there he goes. <laughs> England leads two games to one. Egypt to serve. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I just didn't know that that was really a rule um, that we can use in the junior game, so... I thought it was just the PSA, uh, the, the use of changing a ball, but you learn uh, you learn something every day, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. After the third, they can they can change on the glass. So I think it's a smart decision. Sam's going to want to pick this pace back up. And the new ball that's going to be definitely be a little bit more beneficial to him. I was just about to say, I don't know how, how interested Muhammad is going to be in warming up the ball, but I guess for his own rhythm, he's trying to, he's giving it a good whack as well. So it's great that he's accepting his situation here and he's going to move on to this new ball. an extended uh, break this one yep yeah well they took the full two minutes now another minute two minutes to warm this ball back up so Sam is trying to break a little bit of rhythm yeah I think this could be a good thing for for Muhammad I mean, a little bit of a break and play Long rally to get started. And a little squeeze there. Good squeeze from, from Mahmoud as he forces Sam to hit it loose in the middle. Well, he wants to get on with it though, Mahmoud. He's not, not wasting any time. As I said, I think it's a rhythm player. Loves, loves to continue playing. Feels better when he's actually hitting the ball than when he's chasing after it. And Trying to figure out where it is, but he's been pretty good. Yeah. It seems he's adapted to the ball better than Sam has. Um, yeah, a bit of noise there from the England bench. Trying to get Sam going again. In there, simple error from Sam going for a volley cross or oh, volley straight kill. 
Yeah, he was in a good position as well, so yeah. probably should have made a little bit better use of that of that opportunity. on the back of that then. Yeah, he got stuck, got stuck in the front there, couldn't quite get out. Top shot quality, not as good as what he wanted. Yeah, I've changed my seating position here just to get a better view of the, the coaching staffs of both teams. I mentioned this in the previous match, it would be great if we could get some insights to what the coaches actually tell their players. Um, maybe some to look out for for the future. The squash. Ball pass. Ball is too good. Now left for two. Yeah, Sam's kind of lost that length down the backhand side a left little bit. Left for two. And, uh, you know, Zachary is taking full advantage of it down the backhand. Anything that's short, he's punishing, he's punishing Sam. from Sam at the front of the court it dropped first, sets it up forces yep. Zachary to lift and that quick injection of pace on the cross court so many options off the back wall there from Zachary, gets his racket up early behind the ball looks to hold his opponent and change things up change of pace just happy just to rally down that side a little bit yeah I mean again I still think the match is being played at the Zachary space it's a stroke here yeah, I think it's being penalized for movement maybe uh, ball came back to him as well I mean he forced two loose ones in a row from Sam he sent the first one deep and the second one just caught the wall there and popped it out. It was a really good opportunity for Zachariah to finish the rally. Sam's just got to be careful because Zachariah's kind of winning the battle down the backhand at the moment. He's forcing way more loose shots. Five, four. Quick towel break for Sam. Composes himself between the next before the next point. down to some disciplined work. Quick no left from the referee here. Yeah, good. I'm not sure I agree with that. I'm not a fan of the left leg coming over the way it did there. Guess that might show more effort, but here we go. Next rally. Very good work from, uh, from Muhammad picking up that straight drop from Sam. Just putting it back on the wall. Yeah. 
pass from Sam there. I thought that was a very early pass. He's got to go get the ball there. It's all just getting away from him here a little bit. Get up that way. What a get. Wow. And what an angle we have to see that. Yeah. Fantastic into the front. Again, the game, the match has just descended into basically Muhammad's pace, the pace he likes to play. Mohamed asking for a uh, court service. Doesn't seem to be much there. There is no reason for a court service. I see nothing. Six, seven. I see nothing. Play on. <laughs> court service has been sent back to his seat. Getting tense. Zimbabwe's getting down to the uh, business end of the game. Yep, certainly is. Andrew, uh, it's interesting to see if uh, Sam can keep the ball out of the team, keep playing straight, and at a higher pace. That's what I would be advising him to do at this point. Play it. Yeah, that's, that's where Sam's really strong. That's where he's going to find yeah. more and more opportunities to do this. I think from this back of this box, middle hits it really, really well. Shot Seven and low. Goal. Yep. He was going to take that on the volley. Oh, it's an error. It's a big error there. 8-7. I thought here he's going to step forward and volley that to take it into the front. Did well to clear there, Sam, because he kind of hit it back to himself. Yep. Great drop shot on the volley. That's it, that's a it. Good Sam's bread and butter for me there. So he's setting it up. Now he's finding that range again. Let's see the reaction of the England bench in behind. Yeah. Here they go, two points away. Big chance. Wow. There we go. The first championship point. First, first championship point for England. Was carrying. Ball was carried. Ball was carried. I'm absolutely sure. The referee is called a carry there, so almost a double hit. Um, it's 8 10 match ball. Would have been interesting to see his decision there. That could have gone a number of ways. A 
to business up and down the backhand wall again here. Players. Yes, left. Yes, left. Players jockeying for yes, full position. Uh, referees give a let. It's gone for it. Gone for it. Twice. There you go. This means the world to England. England have won it, I'm not sure where. I think Sam's just remembered that he needs to go shake, shake his, his opponent's head. hand there. He's just run out to shake hands with uh, Mami Zakaria. That is amazing work. That is amazing. Congratulations to England. Obviously, you just see on the corner of the screen there, right in front of us, three boys embracing each other. That is huge for the boys. Uh, congratulations Thanks, to England. Thanks to England for these three well great done, matches. Thanks a lot and congratulations for, to England, who is the winner of this World Junior Team Squash Championship 2022. All right, so there you have it. There you have it. There you have it. They won the 2022 World, World Junior Team Championship. The team championship in juniors was in was 20 years ago, 2002. Wow. Um, please keep your seats. We will proceed to the. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, in about that should be us. Uh, thank you, very thank you so much for joining us for this amazing event. Mr. Cross, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Simba. Mr. Butterworth, it's also been a pleasure. Thank you so much for, for, for doing this today, and uh, we hope to see you guys all around the courts at some point. Take care. Bye.
start shortly. Nous allons commencer très rapidement. Gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, welcome to the medal ceremony of the WSF Men's World Team Junior Squash Championship 2022 in Nancy, France. Bienvenue à cette cérémonie de remise de médaille du championnat du monde junior par équipe masculine. The athletes and the officials will enter into the class court now, preceded by Alona Ohan Sian from Ukraine. I will now call the athletes to come in.
We will start this opening ceremony uh, with, uh, we have the honor to have here with us the president of the World Squash Federation, Mrs. Zina Woodbridge. Ladies and gentlemen, um, players, um, coaches, um, team managers, um, this has been an absolutely fabulous week of squash, I think you'll agree. Um, it's been long awaited and um, I think after two years break, the players have really enjoyed and look forward to this event. So we've, we've, we've been really blessed with 23 teams entered and I think that's an indication of just how important these championships have been to them. Could I um, give a very huge thanks to the French Federation, the French Squash Federation, and um, and their president Julian Muller and your team, Julian, you took this on at very short notice, and we're very grateful um, for for having done that and know how hard your team has worked over recent months in order to put on a fabulous championship. And I think from the players, the coaches, um, and the team managers, they're all hugely grateful for the work that you've done. So thank you very much. And we've got a small um, token of our appreciation here from WSF to commemorate um, your hosting of, of the championship. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the two venues um, that have um, been very busy um, in the last few months leading into, but certainly um, over the last uh, two weeks. I'd like to thank um, Le Rev and, and Jarville for, for the wonderful hospitality that they have given and the hard work that they've done um, to put this event on. So thank you very much to the venues. Also to another man who I think has worked 16 hours a day, um, certainly over the last few weeks and during this championship, is Christopher Vion. Thank you, Christopher, very much. Big hand and big, big, big applause, Christopher. And uh, to our, um, our Director of um, Refereeing, um, Thomas Forter, who I think is here, Thomas. He's at the back, is he? Thank you to Thomas for your guidance and your leadership of the referees this week. And also to Jim Hay, who is in the audience somewhere, who is the WSF um, technical director. And they've all, as a team, worked really hard um, this week in terms of this event. So thank you very much. Also sitting in the background is the tech and the communications team sitting off to, to the right, who have been responsible for all the communications um, and the broadcast, so uh, thanks to those, those people behind the scenes, the unsung heroes. And uh, finally, to the referees, the referees who have done a sterling job, they've worked very long hours, um, and uh, we, couldn't have, we wouldn't have a sport without the referees, so thank you all to them. I know that Jonathan, I know that um, Julian will, will reiterate this, but for all the volunteers, we couldn't run these events without the volunteers. They are absolutely key, and they're the people who come with a smile and, and are only too willing to help throughout the week. So, to the volunteers, thank you very much. And, and finally, just congratulations to all the players. They have given us an absolute feast of fantastic squash and they've entertained us for the last um, 10 days. So a huge thank you to all you, the players, um, and especially um, to the medalists. Um, I, think they, I think you would say that they are, they're all a huge credit to the nation and to the sport. So thank you very much. We've seen some absolutely fabulous squash. Thank you. And I think I'm now handing on to I think I'm handing the back to Julian. Julian. Thank you. Thank you. Matna, uh, now Julian Muller, president of the French Squash Federation, will tell you some words. Monsieur Julian Muller, president de la Fédération Française de Squash, va vous adresser quelques mots. Merci. Euh, on voulait le faire, on l'a fait. 
Euh, je voulais vous dire qu'on était extrêmement heureux de, de vous avoir accueilli euh, pour cette compétition, mais euh, voilà, en dehors de la partie compétitive, d'avoir pu euh, tous vous rencontrer, faire des connaissances, puisque le sport, c'est aussi ça. We wanted to do it, and we done it. We have been so glad to uh, welcome so many young people from different countries, different continents, and we are very happy that we could have all of you with us. J'espère que vous aussi vous avez euh, profité de ces euh, 10 jours de compétition et que ça a été plaisant pour vous d'être ici et de découvrir Nancy et, et, la, et la France évidemment. We hope that you enjoy to have all these athletes uh, here in Nancy uh, during 10 days and that you had uh, some profit from that to see this sport at this high level. Je voulais remercier bah, la WSF de nous avoir fait confiance de nous avoir mis un peu ce défi de réussir à organiser ça en trois mois et de nous avoir fait confiance pour cette organisation on a besoin d'avoir ce genre d'événement en France pour faire la promotion du squash a big thank you to the WSF who trust the French Federation to organize this event because we need in France for the promotion of our lovely sport which is the squash we need events like that et un grand merci à Christopher qui était tout de suite partant pour l'organiser et sans qui on serait sans doute pas lancé. Donc merci Christopher, il n'a pas beaucoup dormi mais il va pouvoir se reposer dans les prochains jours. And a big thanks to Christopher Vautier from the other club who was uh, he was okay to organize it together with Julien this event and he just had no sleep in the last, last 10 days but now he will recover. Comme Zina, je remercie évidemment tous ceux qui ont contribué, donc notamment euh, Jim, Thomas, l'équipe des arbitres qui sont évidemment indispensables à l'organisation. Thanks a lot to Thomas and Jim for helping and for sure all the referees who have been there every day and did hard work during hours. Thank you very much. Et, et évidemment tous les bénévoles qui ont euh, œuvré depuis un peu plus de deux mois parce qu'il fallait tout installer, on a tout transformé et puis qui ont œuvré tout au long de, de ces dix jours pour faire les navettes, la cuisine et, et sans qui on n'aurait rien pu faire. And a big thanks to all the volunteers who worked very hard the last two months here and without we couldn't do anything so they, they, they cooked, they cleaned up, they installed all these uh, glass court and they did uh, the travel um, with the mini buses and uh, yeah, without them it was not possible to organize this event. Et puis évidemment on remercie le ministère des Sports, la région Grand Est, les communes de Nancy, Jarville, Maxéville et la métropole qui ont permis de d'être très réactif pour construire le budget et réussir l'événement. A big thanks is to the sport ministry, to the region of Grand Est, to uh, the um, Jarville and to Maxville who gave the financial support that we will be able to organize this event. Et puis évidemment félicitations donc à tous les joueurs. Félicitations aux médaillés pour le spectacle qui a été donné ici, mais pour tous ceux qui ont suivi en streaming, il y a une super couverture streaming et beaucoup de gens ont pu assister à l'événement, ce qui est super pour la promotion du squash. Thank you very much to the players and to the medalists for your great squash you performed here during the last 10 days and it was very Happy to see how many people followed up that by the live streams. We had a lot of uh, people following the games by the broadcast and live streams. Thanks again to the technical team. And um, yeah, now we we'll, yeah. Et je vais simplement souhaiter un, un bon retour à ceux éventuellement qui seront pas là ce soir et puis euh, partager le temps de ce soir avec grand plaisir pour, avec tous les autres. Merci. 
Have a nice evening this evening for all day who have to go to a leave quickly and for the other players we have a little evening this evening. So thank you very much. We will now proceed to the uh, medal ceremony. First of all, for the bronze medal, please welcome Malaysia. Bronze medal goes to Pakistan. And now the silver medal goes to Egypt. And after 20 years, the gold medal goes again to England! Stand up to listen to the hymn of England. Veuillez vous lever, s'il vous plaît, pour uh, écouter l'hymne de l'Angleterre.
No, it's, it's open for every photographer who want to come and do some photos. Um, just after, we will have a little drink uh, near the bar. You are... Uh, warmly invited and a uh, little bit later please at 6.30 we will pursue to the closing ceremony and you are all welcome to come back with your flags we will do a big photo of all the nations and all the players who have been participating thank you